The magic of Rainex. Okay, that's some serious Hollywood stuff right there. But with Rainex Latitude Water Repellency Blades, the magic is real. These blades apply a new longer lasting water repellency formula. The magic of Rainex repels water from your windshield so water beads up and rolls away while you drive, giving you the clearest view possible. Treat your windshield for safer driving visibility with Rainex Latitude Water Repellency Wiper Blades. Momo, founded in Italy, raced across the world. Trusted by champions for over 50 years, from Formula One to drift tracks. Visit momo.com for more information. This is it, the finals are set, the lights are on. Celebrating 20 years of FD, baby! And here we go! This is Formula Drift, and we are on the streets of Long Beach for the first round. Your winner, Matt Rio! Welcome out to Road Atlanta. This is round two of the Formula Drift Road Championship. Long Beach Junior, two-time champion. The battles that we had at Orlando, I mean, they were intense. There was a lot of contact with the inside. Whoa, are you kidding me with that? That was awesome. Chelsea, the no from gets the win. This is English Town Raceway Park, also known as Round 4. Simon Olsen, Adam LZ, neither have had a Formula Drift overall win, and one of them is going to make history. It is pro time here in St. Louis. The stage is set for round five of the Formula Drift Pro Championship. The finals are set. Odie Bakshi against a new points leader, Frederick Osbo. Come on, boys, send it! Odie Bakshi initiates in that first outside zone. Osbo cutting through that smoke line. Odie Bakshi gets the win. Who's going to get the victory here at Evergreen Speedway? Five previous rounds, five different winners. Frederick Osbo is leading the pack. Chelsea Denofa, Dylan Hughes, the local boy, is going to put it down for his town. Oh, Doctor, they go off court. Dylan Hughes surges forward. Contact with me. That's all she wrote. Your winner here at round six. Chelsea Denofa gets the win. We'll see you guys in Utah. Send it! How we doing, Utah Motorsports Campus? Make some Welcome out, everybody. That's right. We are here. And you look at this backdrop. Oh, my gosh. 
This is God's country, as they call it. Super excited. My name is Jared Deanda, and we are here at round seven. We are elevated. That's right, high elevation drift in Grantsville, Utah, just outside of Salt Lake City. Round seven of the Formula Drift Pro Championships, Pro Spec Double Duty. Joining me here in the booth, Jacob. What's going What's on? Your, how do you pronounce your last name? Gettins. Get with the Gettins, good. Okay, relax. Got okay, it. Know, you know, know, just, just, okay. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 you announced one thing, a prospect, and you got this whole nickname going. I got, I got the share warmed up. I'm ready to go. I'm not leaving. <laughs> All joking aside, Jacob, uh, I heard some of your announcing, and uh, thank you so much for filling in. I just caught a flight in from Detroit. So proud of uh, of Ford and what they're doing over there. I did an event for Ford, so talked to the president, Ryan Sage, said, hey, man, I've only missed one thing prior <laughs> out of 20 years and it was to officiate uh, my boy ron zaris aka ron car from hoonigan his wedding this is the second thing i've ever missed wow well I'm, I'm i'm honored to fill in the spot even for a little bit you and i were two ships Let's passing go. in the night in detroit so you were oh, i was right. leaving i was leaving while you were coming I wa in. Was, i waved to the I canadian know. flag it, across the water i know i saw that i appreciate that yeah. no it's good i'm uh, super happy to be here the signature teal beanie right here uh, i mean I, he takes it off i don't even know who he is anymore it's but uh, you're doing such a good job with your podcast Thank you so much. Uh, one that just dropped with Dean Carnage yeah. Carney. Uh, and any others that you got in the can? Uh, we're recording with all the pro spec guys. Not all of them, but the top yeah. five qualifiers are going to do that. And then whoever wins pro spec, they're getting, in, they're getting one. And then maybe even the champion. So Sweet. lots of pro spec stuff coming up. You're a busy gentleman. So, Very. again, thank you for joining me. And, uh, again, just bouncing around uh, with the, uh, the co-host duties. And uh, how amazing is this track? What did you think of pro spec earlier today? How is pro shaping up? Everybody on paper, a little bit of hater raid, dude. Shut up. You yeah, know what I mean? I was just going to say it. I saw some of these, you know, this, it's so simple, it's so basic. To be honest, the simplest tracks are sometimes the most complex because you have all this room for activities, and sometimes you just blow it. What did you see earlier on Pro Spec? I think one of the biggest things is just that if you dip a wheel, it's mm -hmm. over. If, yeah. if, you, if you get off track at all, it's going to be a problem. So, yeah, take a look here at the 2023 season schedule. We, we've only got a little bit left. We've got two left. A little bit. This I know. Is, uh, <laughs> after this, we got only one more I round. Know. The House of Drift, second time ever coming here to Utah. Look at the variety of winners, right? Um, like I said, I was I was doing doing things with Ford, Ford things, right? But you got Matt Field winning, Vaughn Gitt Jr., Chelsea, Adam LZ, three Pete, baby, Odie Bakshis. He's in the hunt. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. In the hunt for the championship. But Chelsea's making it look really uh, I mean, he's 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 got a shot at it, man. I mean, he's leading the points coming to this round. Utah, I think he's gonna throw down, you know, high speed entry. This track suits Chelsea style, would you agree? Yeah, 100%. Chelsea loves those big whip entries. We've been seeing him practice getting all the way out to one side, all the way back, big, big entries, and somehow still hitting all of his marks. It's it's actually incredible the way he's yeah. riding today. Absolutely. 2022, last year, Ken Gushi got the win here. At, wait, Ken Gushi in Seattle? Is that Seattle or St. Louis? Yeah, no, no, this, this is here. This is this was last yeah. year in Utah. Salt Lake, Salt Lake, yeah. <laughs> Ken Gushi, Frederick Osbo, and Chelsea like, Tanopa. I don't know. I don't know why it says Seattle. Ah, I was throwing it off there. Hey, uh, you know, it, it's all good. Yeah. It's still buffering right now. Uh, <laughs> that was St. Louis. Excuse me. I'm even glitching here. Uh, there it is. Salt Lake City. Ken Gushi got the win here. And uh, again, this track. You know what's really cool, and I, what I like about this, since it is our sophomore session at this track, meaning the second time we've ever come here, is nobody has a lot of data on it, right? So they're going to come in kind of, I don't want to say flying blind by any means, but definitely uh, less than other tracks. But here's a look at our driver standings right now. Chelsea Denofa leads the pack. You can see a little bit of a gap there ahead of Frederick Osbo. We know how clinical Osbo is. Odie in the hut as well. Matt Field sitting back there. A little bit of bad luck streak there for Matt Field from round one to as we enter round seven. And uh, you can see rounding out top ten, James Dean. James. You yeah. think he's going to come alive? I think so. I mean, uh, getting used to that RTR cannot be easy. We're, we're talking about arguably the greatest drifter of all time. Comes in and works with these cars, but he's hitting his stride. And he's hitting it quick. Yeah. And it won't take long for him to make up that gap. And I think, uh, again, back back to the point of it only being the second time ever we've been here, uh, it, it, could, it could favor somebody like James Dean where he could uh, really sink his teeth into it. So our track's getting prepped. Our judges are getting prepared and uh, super excited. Oh, man, who do, you, who do you think? I mean, just taking a look at practice, taking a look at the track, knowing the driving style. Like I said, I mean, all signs for me are St. Chelsea and Alpha. Yeah, I, 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 
I want to agree, but I also want to see a dark horse come out of it. I watched a run here with Trenton Beecham, Ooh. and the way he was filling the zones in his transitions was pretty crazy. So I'm a, I'm a, if I'm going to bet, I'm going to go all in on something crazy. I like that. Yeah, let's go Trent Beecham. Like let's see what that. happens. Yeah, that's good. Hey, Ryan Turk, I was just with him in uh, Sydney, Australia a couple weeks ago. Uh, different form of racing. He yeah. did the World Time Attack Challenge, man, driving that Formula Supra. Uh, he's he's hungry. He, he wants he wants to get a win. Um, I don't know if you just saw it there. It does it does uh, bear repeating there. Place your bets. Literally, you can uh, you can gamble on FD. It's crazy. It, I love really? it. It's, 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 it's so rad. And I will tell you, I was just telling Ryan Sage, just off camera here, president of Formula Drift, and I was telling him, I said, dude, drifting isn't just like an afterthought. It's on the tip of, I was with Jim Farley, CEO of Ford, Tuesday, yesterday, last night, um, Larry Holt from Multimatic, and drifting is on the people's tip of their tongue, man. I, I, it's, it's part of the conversation, you know, and I, I just... I'm really proud of it as we celebrate 20 years. We're almost culminating, you know, at the end of Irwindale, celebrating 20 years of Formula Drift. You know, it, it's it's pretty pretty intense, right? Yeah. I mean, you you I mean, because you've kind of seen it from a fan base, enthusiast base, and now here you are. You're behind the curtain, man. Yeah, I get to I got to go all the way through it from from super fan to working, you know, with on the track. Now on the stuff, microphone, now, dude. I'm on the mic. It's crazy. <laughs> just keep pushing. That's it. Just never give up. Just keep pushing. Hold me closer. Time to dance. <laughs> Taking a look here, so X Factor, you know, we have, so what what goes on here is line angle style, right? So we have one one through 90 points, or zero 90 points if you have an incomplete, right? And then the X Factor, 10 points, that's the, the unknown. How is the X Factor shaping up early? You got outer zone one, outer zone two, outer zone three. Again, pretty cut and dry. You got the inner clip on initiation. You kind of want to bring it in, then out. Nice fluid. What'd you see at Prospect? Uh, I saw that the judges are not giving away those points easily. The Ooh. biggest thing they talked about is being on throttle, especially through outer zone two. It's a big zone. So they want to see that quick initiation in, and they want you to commit to it. And I think that's what we're looking for. Rudy Hansen, this was Prospect earlier. He is the number one qualifier. He got the win in Atlanta earlier this season. Currently leading the pack, Ben Hobson. Don't know where you landed as far as qualifying, but uh, you nine, know. Nine. Nine. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so Rudy Hansen flirting with the dirt in there. You see him filling all that outside zone, getting in that final outside zone. Look at it. It's long and strong down to get the friction on. So, ladies. Ladies. Yeah. I'm going to get down my S13. I was going to say, is. yeah, we don't Look, you can see ladies. Rudy getting hyped there. Uh -huh. um, that's what you want to do. Uh, his score overall, didn't know the exact number, but he is your number one qualifier. Yeah, it was uh, it was a crazy qualifying. We saw some nuts stuff happen. If you guys get a chance, go back and take a look at it. And yeah, Rudy with a, with an 86 in there. So they're not giving away these points easy. No. You're gonna have to fight for it. And X factor is not gonna be something that's easy to achieve. Taking a look at how many drivers we have. The drivers list has 34. Don't know if exactly everybody is here in the building. We will see if if we do have all of the 34. Did see Kristaps in house. You did see Chris. I did see Chris. Awesome. Yeah, I know. Glad, glad to see him back. Uh, is Alex Holovnia here? Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't actually no? see. Okay, he, he is out. Okay, so that knocks it down to 33 just like that. So, uh, But, again, keys to success. Jacob, rattle them off. Yeah, you? quick to angle on initiation. Real snappy. They got lots of room to play. We want to see that go nice and fast and under the zones. Decel after transition for outside zone two. Back on the throttle as quick as you can into outside zone two. Fill all the zones and big transitions. I just wanted you to say the keys to success because I know you say out zone. Oh, I said it. <laughs> Set me up for Canadian. I get it. I yeah, get it. I mean, I mean, look, I mean, we got we get, we got uh, Ryan Lontane in front of you too. I'm surrounded by Canadians. It's happening. We're invading. All right. <laughs> All right. So as uh, you know, taking a look, I, I, like I said, I was I was in Detroit Motor City last night working with Ford. So let's take a look back the history of Ford here in the drifting world. Just outside of Salt Lake City, this is playing host not only to round seven of the Formula Drift Pro Championship, but this is round four, the final round of the Link Engine Management Prospect Championship. We're going to see him in to our top 32. Oh, look at that, pulling that front right off. Looking way more settled than he was in that first run. Oh, more performance putting him up there, and check it out, big angle, Snooki. Didn't, wasn't focusing on, but saw a little twitch in that chase position. Now coming into that second outside zone. First outside zone, transitioning into the second outside zone. Frederick Osmo, the goal. Oh, knocks him out. Throws some more angle at it. Chelsea stays in it. Holy cow. With the assist on the drift. Chelsea and Nova staying in it. You saw Osmo come from the rear. A little gravel being thrown up. I have never seen
Made in Japan. Breed. Passionate about a life in racing? Circle track, drag racing, drifting, or monster jam. Find it all at the University of Northwestern Ohio. If you want to get everything you need to know about Monster Jam, about motorsports, you got to go to UNOH. It's been the best opportunity I've ever taken. I've gotten so many opportunities, so many different connections. You build every basic skill that you need to be able to work in racing and get your foot in the door. See where your future can take you with a high-performance motorsports degree from the University of Northwestern Ohio. Radio experience ultra high performance. Oh man, I'm super excited. I mean, we have absolutely a bluebird day, but what's crazy is I was just, I was out here like what, three weeks ago for Nitro Cross. I'm driving, I was like 95 degrees downtown, driving here, all of a sudden a sandstorm rolls through, wind, rain it was it was biblical and then it cleared up just like that yeah the so, weather here is insane it's just it, it's bipolar dude yeah. like it could just change like that man so the type s elevator presented by AutoZone, round seven of the formula drift pro championship knockout qualifying so some drivers one and done the bottom drivers will have to re-rack them stack them and track them to find out who will fill the bottom eight spots of the grid so uh, again we'll we'll fill the top ones and then uh we rack the uh, the bottom qualifying drivers. Taking a look, taking a look here, uh, talking about who is in the building. We go from uh, hate to say it, but worst to first. I hear it's you. just it's someone's got to be at the bottom. Yeah, and unfortunately, Holovnia, I believe he is not here. Right? We talked about him. Yeah. Um, super stoked. Kristaps is back in the building. Um, we should should be seeing Kyle Mohan, Ola Jaeger. They're going to be uh, going for it. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's. Oh, a, it's we, a, we, hey, real quick update. Kyle Mohan calling competition timeout. Ooh, right off the bat. Right out the gate, man. That's going to hurt. So uh, that that is not a sign of a good time right there. No. No, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, looking at like the, the way that this is set up, this is obviously backwards to what we're looking at in the rankings right now. Um, it's anybody's game. There's a lot of – there's not that much of a spread. Like between all of the points, even going all the way through the ranks, there's not a ton of spread here. So one event can change everything, and that is what's beautiful about this sport is, is yeah. anything can happen at any time yep yeah just with this track we we had some words here our judges this round of competition we got robin Ishida, ryan lontane brian egger those are three judges again we've been rotating this season implementing something new this year i, I like it a little variety changing things up chris yule will be uh, assisting sean adriano as far as uh driver steward and and driver and team engagement mm, and there's been the a piece. lot of engagement this year man like what are, you, what are your thoughts on that yeah i mean everyone's getting really passionate and i think that's where it stems that's from. a very everyone's kind word very very passionate yeah that's passionate. cute I, I, hey I just, <laughs> everyone everybody wants to win and everybody's going to look at every single line in the rule book and they're going to look at every situation and go okay what can we do yeah. to potentially move on there's a, there's a lot tied into this sometimes it gets abused though i i'm, I'm I telling you when 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 there's a door and, and you have that opportunity, use all the tools, right? right. So that, that is a tool or strategy as mm -hmm. far as one clarity, like you said, everybody's competitive, everybody wants to win. If you have an, even an inkling of a doubt of, a, you know, something, oh no, we got Ola. Oh, here we go. Yeah, okay, I thought he was going away. Yeah. Ola Jaeger, Japan Auto, Mark IV Toyota Supra, come to us from Norway. A little bit of correction on those wheels. I was going to talk to the judges what they were analyzing. Talking about going that second outside zone. We removed that inner clip too, like last year, but look at that big outside zone. That is the big one you need to fill. Good fluidity here. And come from that last outside zone, the red and white matching in, and ooh, looks like he does drop a tire, throws a little gravel machine gun into the fans, into the crowd, and uh, they, they are out there in that splash zone. So uh, put on your sunglasses, put on your glasses, put on your spectacles. Yeah. Take a look at it again here, Jacob. This splash zone is not the one you want to be standing next to, but Ula Jaeger coming in a little bit shallow, but 
does touch off on that first inside clip, outside zone one, wasn't too bad, using all the rumble strips through two. We see a decent amount of angle here. The car starts to slow down a bit, but we're not measuring speed. So why not? Why not like yeah. loosen the car up a little bit and see how much you can throw at it? You gotta be careful here. We saw a couple of guys earlier today dip some wheels in and really get bitten. So he's flirting with danger just by dropping one wheel off. You see a lot of handbrake there, you, can, you know, with that back wheel stopping. Yanking on that brake to get the car to slide backwards. That's, you know, people think, you know, oh, what's, what's that going to do? Adjusting the car to get it backwards, filling all that zone. I really like the second outside zone. The third, the first and the third, little bit of room for, uh, room for, let's call it, you know, refinement. Yes. Um, because you saw, oop, you see that car get disrupted. He has to correct. Fluidity is going to be the name of the game here. Talking to Ryan Lontane right before we went live, Jacob, he had some words. He was talking about going from outside zone one into that big outside zone two. A lot of these higher horsepower cars, which are all the pro cars, yep. they are, for lack of a better term, drifting or letting it sail and drift, not just the act of drift, but basically being off throttle. They need to kind of have this good fluidity through outside zone one into two. They're really focusing on line here in qualifying. When it comes to head to head, it's gonna be a different story. I think that things will be a little bit more aggressive. What are your thoughts? What, what is your takeaway from being in the driver's meeting, talking to Ryan, Brian, and Robbie? Yeah, the biggest thing is get the line down. Everything, it doesn't matter how much angle you have if you're in the middle of the track. So make sure you're filling all the zones, get into those zones early. And that transition between outside zone one and outside zone two, there is supposed to be a D cell there, Word. but that, it's, a, it's a short D cell. You cannot be, like you said, floating the car yeah. all the way out to two. They want you back on the throttle as soon as you can, but they also understand there's going to be a bit of a slowdown. So, mm -hmm. they're, I mean, the judges are telling you what they want. Listen to what they want. Adhere. Yeah, and just do it. Yeah. I, I say that like I could do any of this. I know. Right? You know I, <laughs> and, and, and I, I loved how it was definitely uh, – Let's call it meme centric. Yeah. Dylan Hughes, like you try it, dog. Last at last round, right? When, yeah. When the judges were, ex their expectations are meant to be met. And with with that being said, yeah, judges have every right to fire back, man. I mean, where they're placing the car and all that. Hey, let's take a look at there. Hey, number one qualifier. So far. Ula Yeager. I know. Look at him. Oh man, take the, screen the lead. Number one qualifier. Ula Yeager was 74. All joking aside, it's a it's a decent score. It's yep. good, but it, it it really sets the bar. It sets the tone. Joao Berrion from Brazil as uh, he is going to rip down here in his Corvette. Joao, uh, we haven't seen him totally hit, I would say, his peak potential just yet. Um, having some gremlins working out the car, getting it dialed. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think he's, he's also kind of developing things as he goes, which, which is tough, but, you know, he is, he's, it's, it's getting better. He definitely has the talent. I think it's just man not versus machine with machine. Oh, big angle there. Wow, very on. Initiates. There's that inside clip one. Now goes into outside. Outside zone one. In outside zone two. Good fluidity there. You can see the car looking a lot more settled than it has in previous rounds. That's good. Not seeing, you know, those kind of quick little corrections. Snapping into that last outside zone. Feel that exhaust though. He's on throttle. That is good, man. And that, like I said, Hasn't hit his peak potential. We might just see it here in uh, in Utah. Yeah, we want to see the set it and forget it. We want to see go into the zone, throttle down, and not making a lot of corrections here. So great initiation. Wasn't anything super, super aggressive, but it was good. It was steady. Through that first inside clip, great. Outside zone one, it could have been a little bit deeper. Yeah. Two, got into the rumble strips a little bit early, but he does hold on. He does fill it out. Big left foot brake there. You can see the smoke coming off that front right tire as they transition his down a hill right. into three. He's on power well before the zone, holding the car back, that left foot brake, but just lets it sing. You know what? You bring up a great point. Mild elevation change outside zone two into three. It's 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 my new, I mean, you can see it's a fairly flat track, you know, like we're at Atlanta, but there is one. So that momentum could throw you off just a little bit going. So watch it as he goes from outside zone two, into three from that angle you can't really see it i like i like that aggressiveness i think that'll fare very well and heads ahead he's gonna get a good score i think he's gonna take that number one spot from Willie Yeager. yeah this could be one of his best qualifying runs. so it was uh yeah it's a great run and i'm excited to see what the judges say about it um yeah the, the camera this this angle right here shows it a little bit better right but it's like you know the camera adds 10 pounds it takes some elevation <laughs> out, so Add 10 is <laughs> i know yeah it, it, it adds 50 pounds. I'm actually 100. I'm, I weigh 150 pounds. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's, I blame the camera. All right, so uh, Kyle Menace Mohan here, renewable lubricants, Mazda, Mazda Trix RX-8. 
Kyle Mohan been uh, been banging away for numerous years. Would love to see him get on the box from Long Beach, California. His pops in the building. Saw him earlier. He's always always got a smile on his face. Signature handlebar mustache, and there it is, an 82. So uh, Joao, nice score there, an 82. A little bit of X factor in there too. A little bit, oh, a couple right. points. Yeah, yeah, a couple points. Yeah, 1.5, right? That's average. One, two, 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 one. Yep. Canon knockout qualifying. Canon, the official air filter of Formula Drift. All right, so Kyle Mohan pulling up. Also, uh, I got to let you know, as uh, be sure to stop by and see the brand new Hero 12 Black just launched this week. Exclusive pricing here at Formula Drift. Discount plus an accessory bundle worth $200, only available here at Formula Drift. Go on by the GoPro booth. Here we go, Kyle the Menace Mohan initiating. You see him coming in, the lone rotary, the last starfighter. Throw the wrinkles down into that second outside zone. A lot of angle there, kind of. Now just pour some more at it. So you saw him kind of step his angle into a flex fuel vehicle coming to that last outside zone. Real early on that transition. Doesn't get deep. Good exhaust snow, but you, I, you know, we didn't get clarification on why he called his competition timeout, but I have to, you know, it may be a little reflective there in that run. I think I think I think he's got a better run in him. Yeah, I do, I do too. We've seen moments of greatness out of Kyle Mohan. We've seen incredible things come out of him and this car and different chassis. But it, it's it's different when you're running a rotary. It's a completely different, you know, torque curve and, and horsepower curve, and it's just it's more difficult. But Kyle filling the zones. He's doing what he needs to do. But I'd like to see more angle. 100. percent I'd like to see a bit more commitment. I mean, there is some commitment there as he goes right. into the dirt, yep. but it is it is tough, and, and Kyle's doing what he can. I, I, it, I feel like he's down a little bit on horsepower. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, and with the course like this, it's, you know what, if, if he gets into the top 32, which I, he's, he's got a score, which is good, um, will, where will he land again right now on paper? We have 33 drivers, so uh, you, you, you're going to have to show up. So getting, you know, we only have 32 spots. You've got to fill them. And uh, when it comes to head-to-head, -head, I would be a little timid when you go against Kyle right there, but I, I, good line. I think he's got a better one in his back pocket. Yeah, for sure. I, I agree. I know I know Kyle can can get out there and yeah. actually really crush, and it's uh, yeah, it's tough to see somebody struggle. But right. uh, that, that, was a, that was a solid run. Yep. I'm sure the points will will kind of reflect that. Be reflective of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, taking a look, is that Chris Stops that warming is. it up? HGK. Really, gl really glad to see uh, Chris Stops back. Just a fun-loving dude, and it just has a very signature style, very stoic. The the scream he let out on the podium when he won in Atlanta is something that is just that's ingrained Visceral. in my brain. Yeah. Oh, just that. Is that yeah. Your, is that your ringtone? Yeah, you, could, oh, I should. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, every time he texts me, the one time he texts me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seventy-seven point three three. Seventy-seven point three three for Kyle Mohan. I don't know why his scream just it, it beckons Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Ouch. You say that to him. Yeah. He still scares me. Uh, yeah, I know he does. <laughs> he would. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, Christos Blush, big upset against Frederick Osbo in Road Atlanta. Coming to us from Riga, Latvia, the Latvian lover, ready to throw down for his town. Talking about Latvia. The HGK, GT Radio, BMW, backs it in, big angle. Does miss that inside clip there. I will put that out there, Jacob. Coming back second, outside zone. Again, just a very fierce driver. Poignant gets to the point. Big angle there. You can see how just maxed out his front wheels are. Look at that last outside zone. Woo! Look at that. Minimal wheel feed. You saw in that cockpit, that, and that, that's that's a sign of confidence, right? That last outside zone. Let's analyze it again. Like I said, he missed that inside clip number one, but uh, as Ryan was talking about, it's all about line. Yeah, we've seen a few people almost sacrifice that inside clip to make sure they have enough speed and, and fluidity through the rest of the track, so did miss it. What was interesting to watch is the how the car bounces a little bit. He's got it really soft, and in this case, it is gripping up a little bit as he comes through two exits just at the right time. Transition looks really good as he starts to come through three, and we see that left foot break, but the biggest thing I noticed coming off the line is how bouncy that car was, so I'd be curious. You can see here, even as he shifts that front end is dropping and you see it shift at yeah. initiation a little, so, porp, a little porpoising yeah the car right. is low it is it is a low car i mean it's not just body low yeah and uh you can watch it lean as it comes into drift it's I, I, i'm fascinated by all the different setup changes guys have and how you can take the same chassis and bolt in six different ways yeah no and and the bmws are becoming wildly popular the the 
you know, late models, early models, you know, obviously in, in pro spec, that's, you know, you're, you're seeing the aftermarket, not just aesthetics, but obviously it comes down to suspension and, and what they're like. Yeah, the E36 and the E46 are dialed in now. Yeah. You can, it, you, any drifting store out there can have everything you need to build a whole so, is, it, is it out there? Out there. Okay. Way out there. Would you like to say out there? Yeah, bro. Out there? I'll, out I'll try there, and add bro. an A to my O's. Okay, Instead guy. of a U to my Well, O's. again, what's the last letter in the alphabet? X, Y. Z? No, it's a Z. Okay. Like, it's, 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 it's Z. Right. Look at Ryan. <laughs> Lante. It's a 350Z. It's not a 350Z. I mean, depends on where you're Look, in the world. just saying. I speak American, bro. Don't, That's fine. Don't kill the messenger. Literally, I get chastised all the time. Look, I just I, I, I preach on, brother. 75.33 for Christos Blush puts him into third position. 75.33 for the Latvian lover. All right, Jeff Jones, he has just been banging away. Had a little bit of bad luck in Seattle. Would love to see him bounce back, build that, you know, he's been working on the engine. And uh, again, shout out to uh, Evil Auto Works, Redlands, California. Um, great group of guys there. And Jeff Jones always having a good time. What are your expectations here? Have you talked to him at all? No, I haven't talked to him this weekend. You need him on the podcast. I know, I know. We've been, I what? talked to him about it briefly. Do your job. I'm <laughs> the cop. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how it looks. Yeah, he's, he's an OG as well. Yeah. Here we go. Jeff Jones throwing it in. Evil Auto Works. Nissan 370Z. Good aggressive flick. You see a little body flapping in the wind. And then comes that inside clip. And that first outside zone hits it and quits it. A little bit of a yank of the handbrake there. Back on the bottle. Now, what we're talking about the drifting going to that second outside zone. That exhaust note, again, smoke is not a criteria or a judge criteria, I should say. But uh, it's. I like that. I like that last outside zone. Mm -hmm. Want to take a look at it again? We're, and again, the judge is talking about you want to be on throttle because, you know, D cell zone. Nah, you gotta stay on it. Yeah, he had a, a, a kind of a slow initiation. It was really, really long though. But he gets in that first inside clip, first outside zone looked great. Good transition to two. But this is where that slowdown is. They want it kind of back on throttle, but where he is slowing down. So it's a little bit late to that outside zone. Two looks great. Into the transition, though, you can see how wide he gets before he gets into three, which can be difficult. It can make you shallow near the end of it, and we start to see that with Jeff Jones here. So, big initiation. He almost flat spot those tires yeah. coming into there. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great point. Yeah, but uh, no, Jeff, Jeff put down a solid run there. There's definitely some points that he needs to clean up. You know, anywhere on this track, if you're a little bit early, it's going to make you leave a little bit early. If you're a little bit late, you're going to go off track. So. It's a, it, there's a, so much timing involved here. And this is, this is to my point, you know, just the dialogue online of people seeing this track. Because, be, here's, here's the dark side, as my director is calling it, the dark side, I don't know. Yes, yeah, so that's your body, you merely adopted, I was born in it. Um, oh, so, man. yeah, right. Uh, with, with a track so unassuming and it just having one inside clip and three outside zones, like I said, there's, there's, there's a big window of opportunity, but there's also equally a window of failure. <laughs> yeah. You know, because it is so straightforward. And 80.66, no X Factor points. Keep that in mind, yeah. right? I mean, that could be 85, 82, or so, but an 80.66, that's a great score. Yeah, you can, you can Jones. think it's unassuming, but wait till we flip back to some of these camera shots. It head is to head's gonna get bombed. So big. It's head to head's trip. gonna be door to door, yeah. wheel to wheel. Um, we haven't pointed out yet when it comes into play, but out going from outside zone one into outside zone two, we actually, the judges have, or excuse me, the drivers have requested a point of reference um, because the smoke is gonna be a factor when it comes to head to head. There's, there's an American flag we put actually at the top yeah, there's the flag there's, that's there's there. A, there's a forklift. There's a flag, and what, what that is is that's a point of reference when they go to outside zone one into two. That way, if there's smoke, they can use that as a point of reference, not just blindly looking into the you know, atmosphere, right? There's actually there also is, a so, yeah. three, two, one cone going into two. So if you look out, you can actually see, almost like initiation, they're given a spot of like, okay, this is where yeah. you need to be slowing down, and this is where you need to be back on throttle. So, so that's, right outside, out, that's right outside zone two. This is, again, a point of reference for the drivers as smoke will be a factor going from outside zone one to two. So that's kind of your sight line. And that's that's going to be a, a tool widely used by a lot of the drivers. Here we go, Mike Power from uh, Port Jeff Station, New York. Let's see what Mike Power's got. That Type S S15, good aggressive initiation. You see the car just dig in, settle in there, that first outside zone. Oh yeah, look at that, Mike. 
Finding the sweet spot. A little bit of correction there from the front wheels. Ooh, he gets into the dirt, and that'll be a spin. He was a speedy boy. Yeah, he, he real overcooked quick. it. Yeah, he was he was coming in way too hot. You know, Mike Mike has made the move to Southern California. He um, he's not getting a lot of seat time. That's, yeah. that's you know talking to him. Uh, you know, just getting more and more familiar with this type SS15. You, you, can, you can see off the jump how quick he was going, and right here that knee break was just a bit too long. Makes him a bit shallow, but that also, because of the arc of that, that whole corner, being shallow there pushes you wider. That's exactly what we saw with Mike. But I will give him a shout out, a, bit, a big Type S shout out. They just dropped the Mike Power jump starter pack. I don't know if you saw that. It's all branded with his stuff. It's got his logo on it. So yeah. good, uh, good company man, Mike yeah, Power. Yeah, I love it. Perfect name for that company, too. Mike Power. Mike Power. But don't call him Mike Powers. No. No. Not it's once. singular, not plural. Yes. Made that mistake. One Power. Well, historically, <laughs> in Formula Drift, there was a driver. Well, coincidentally, name started with an M, has four letters. His name was Matt Powers. Yes. Now we have another gentleman. Name starts with M, four letters, Mike Power. So it is, uh, you know, there's Will Power, there's mm. Matt Powers, there's Mike Power, singular. There could be only one Mike Power. The, the, the Power Trio. Can we call him Miguel Power? Ooh, I'm all right with that. <laughs> <laughs> what is power in Spanish? Like, uh, Ryan, I feel like you'd know. What is, what is, anybody know Spanish? What's power in Spanish? Anybody? anybody? I know the chat will let us know, that's for I don't sure. Know. Yeah, so, yeah, the chat. Oh, yeah. here we go. And it's coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Might be able to get it in Portuguese as well. Right, there yeah. we go. <laughs> Doing a, a quick cleanup of the track there. I was informed I, that, that this is called the Buffalo. Fuerza. It's Fuerza. Ah. It's uh, Miguel Fuerza. Miguel Fuerza. There we go. That's dope, right? That's pretty good. Yo, Mike, like I'm just saying. Game. Yeah. Just saying, Miguel Fares. Could like, be Max Power. Like Max, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Stole it from a hairdryer. <laughs> <laughs> There's, speaking of hairdryer, right there. Exactly. Yeah. Bringing it all back around. So, yeah, Matt, or uh, Matt. I'm saying Matt now. Mike Power. Oh, boy. That little bit of a dip. You know, we got we to gotta make sure that the, it's an even playing field, quite literally. It's making sure there's no dust or anything. The way that these cars are That's so That's Ryan literally. Up, if Ryan literally. I wonder how many driver puns we can slide into qualifying. Time. Oh, bro, I've been doing this. I know you since have. you've been in diapers. I know. It's, I just I want to sit and observe from the master at this point. Uh, yeah, young Padawan. No, just, no forest you, jokes. You, you, what's that? No forest jokes. No forest jokes. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> if if a, if a drift car drifts in a forest, uh, does Forrest Wang have the V8? Yeah. As we look out over this beautiful vista, is that, it, it, that is a lake? That is, is that? a lake. Wow. Yeah. I thought it was just all salt now. No. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lake. Yeah. I, I wouldn't go in it. No? No. We were it's talking good. about skydiving earlier. Have you done that? Would you Gosh, no. Not even a little bit? No. I'm good. All right. This, this, this vessel, I did bungee jump once. Okay. I went to, went to Mad Mike. Mad Mike has, a, has an event, and it's, a, it's an amazing event. And uh, we went to New Zealand, and I was the second heaviest dude. I'm there with Turk and with Chris Forsberg, right? And, they're, and we're all like in agreement. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. And I was the first. I was the second. The first dude, the heaviest dude, didn't go. And I and we all agreed we weren't going to do it. I was the second to go. The first dude didn't go. I was like, nope, we're not doing it. I got called out. I did it. And then there, Turk and Forsberg were like, oh man, now we got to do it. We can't be showed up yeah. by Jared. Here we go. Speaking of literally, here comes Ryan Literal at Power Stop S15. Throws it in. Good aggressive flick. A lot of handbrake there. Massage it into that inside flip in his first outside zone. The sun exhaust zone. So that's, that's really good. Kind of comes out of trip there. See a quick little correction there in that second outside zone. Make a small little adjustment. Now in the last outside zone. Beautiful exhaust notes with the RB Army flag waving high and a good run there for Ryan Literal. Some little refinements there that do need to be made, but uh, overall, decent. Yeah, I was honestly expecting a bigger entry. Ryan right. is known just to sling it out there, but it was a good good entry. Does catch inside clip one, does really well in outside zone one. Through two, could have been a little bit deeper. I mean, smidgen, seven, say smidgen? smidgen, yeah, smidgen deeper. Smidgen a pigeon. Good transition into three though, and then you just hear him. I, I do like the sound of an RB. Yes. Just laying it down and throwing all the throttle all the way through outside zone three. It looked like he could have been a little bit deeper the first part of it. And I know we're being nitpicky here, but really at this level, nitpicky is just the standard. So, yeah, Ryan doing a good job. You can see the big left foot break. Those three spokes really show off when 
he has left foot breaking. He can, can see him shining in all their white glory. And it's uh, he's doing everything he can to, to get around and, and put as much style on it as he can. That car, so reflective. I like, <laughs> you know? Blinded by Ryan Literal's car. I, I love me like a flash of the world. Yeah. Well, he's kind of going for that Jason back there. Little J, J feel. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's good. He's, he's always had great liveries. Um, I talked about it before. One of my favorite battles of all time when uh, him and Riley Sexsmith were back and forth yeah. in Atlanta. They hit each other like six times in one lap. <laughs> and they're just banging. Oh, it was so good. You know, anybody watching at home, when this is over, go back and watch that battle because okay. it's incredible. I know uh, you and Sexsmith are uh, confidants. He's, uh, getting back in the car. I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. I know. Excited. I'm not making any predictions. But Can I'll, you I'll say out and about in a houseboat? Out and about in a houseboat. And what kind of, what's the tall things? Cowboy, what do cowboys wear? Cowboy boots. <laughs> 87, that's an 87 it's for Ryan Literal. First place, look at it, we got some X-Factors coming in. Yo, yo, look at that, Ryan Literal, yeah. Hey, who's Judge One? Oh, Brian Eggert, look at that. He is a, he He's is a- stingy. He is a stingy boy. Yeah. I've, I've eaten I've eaten meals with him, he's not sharing. Who, Brian? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's, like he's got nope. no sharing the chips. Can't sit here, nope. seat's taken. Seat's taken. That's Brian. That's, yeah. that's Agar. He's a stingy with those X Factor points. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. I love giving the, the judges. Especially I mean, it is an unenviable job. It is. It's difficult. It oh. is. It is. They're widely criticized. No, it is. I know. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Could not. You could not pay me enough to do that job. You could. I'll, I. I Okay. Oh, yeah, no, that's fair. I mean, there's a number. There's a, I know it's a, a figure reasonable. speech, but there is a number. Yes, oh, I think there's that. Yeah. There's not a reason. Here. No, I'd do it. <laughs> I'd do it. Here we go. Let's take a look. Diego Higa, another Brazilian driver. Diego Higa, JDM Supreme, goes in that first outside zone. Boom. Hits it, fills it. The second outside zone. Again, this vehicle. Whoa, he is. All right. Nitro Cross was a few weeks ago, Diego, unfortunately. And that's uh, completely off. That's going to be an incomplete, unfortunately, for uh, for this Brazilian pilot. Yeah. He's finishing off the run. Paid for the tires. Going to use them. Yeesh. Right? Yeah. That's that's the that's the I N C O M P L E T E. Incomplete. Yeah. And we we talked about this before. If you go one tire off, you have a chance at saving it, unless there's one of those mounds out there. That's what uh, got Jay back in uh, pro spec. But if you go two wheels off there's very little chance you're going to recover from it. Yep. There's a few tracks where you can dip two off and, and get some grip again and get back in there, but the gravel here is, is not going to let you It's going to grab you. It is. It's going to grab you. And, it, I mean, for anybody watching near the fence, if you are near the gravel, you you got to watch out. It's going to get It's going to get you. As we take a look here at our qualifying results so far, if you see them in the red there, you can see Mike Bauer. That means they've got an incomplete. That's also what the INC means there. Um, so this is what we've got right now. Just getting a clarification, literal score was an 87.66. He did have some. So it was an 87, but let's throw a, for good measure, 87.66. He still does retain the number one qualifying position as it stands, but uh, getting some clarification here from uh, the Bushido Blade. Yeah, oh. those, those, dis those, those decimal points, they can mean everything. Absolutely. Yeah. So Diego Higa is an incomplete, unfortunately. And uh, 87.66, Robert Thorne. Robert Thorne, every drift car has its own. Just look at every cowboy. Is it poison? No, what? Is it? I think it might yeah. be. Is it poison? Yeah. Well, it's a bit twice shy. Could be. Yeah. Unskinny bop, too. Oh, that's there we go. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the one that comes ahead for you, unskinny bop bop. Uh, Blows me away. Robert Thorne, yeah. So he has been a disruptor here. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he has. You know, I think his jump, you know, he... Keep in mind, 2022 Prospect Champion enters the conversation. Traditional road racer, right? Smedegard Racing, um, just a, a real weapon behind the wheel, traditional. Comes over to drifting, kills it, yeah. crushes it. The jump to pro, a little bit of struggle bus. What, what do you think that? Uh, it, he, he really to? hasn't changed his car much for pro. It actually has a stock gas tank in it. We have no fuel cell. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Let's uh, let's break down Robert Thorne's run here. The ASM BMW. Let's see how it tightens up the inside clip. Quick little correction. Little nasty on that aggressive initiation. Not a lot of angle in that first outside zone. I want to see again different perspective. Gets into the gravel. You see him dipping some tire. It didn't end up grabbing him all the way. There's the truth here. That angle right there. That's going to be really. You can see just how how much, and you can see breaking that down 
on that last run. I want to see a different angle on that first outside zone because to me it looked like he kind of didn't have a lot of angle, but it might have just been that perspective. Yeah, it was hectic. He, yeah, he definitely go. came out wide and then good initiation and then big left foot breakthrough one and he kind of just drove over yeah. outside zone one. Outside zone two, you can see just able to hang on. I didn't know he did off-road racing as yeah. well, but he managed to hang in there through two and then as he transitions into three, you can see him set it up. You can see him kind of steer the car into it. He realizes he's not going to fill the whole zone, but makes the corrections necessary to at least potentially get a run on the board. I don't think he did three off anywhere, possibly through outside zone one, but he, once again, I need a yeah. different angle to really know if that's the case, but it was hectic. It wasn't yeah. as calculated as he normally is. Yeah. Oh man, bouncing around. I'm sure that was a ride inside though. Well, what's interesting I think is he, he is, he's, he's at 11 right now with that car, like you said, making the jump from pro spec. That is a pro spec car jumping to pro. This is a high speed track. You know, it's just this big pin it to win it. You know, we, we just get get out there, throw it all out there. And uh, yeah, zip, zip, zip tie that gas pedal down. Well, we, we see it on the slower tracks where he can really come into his own. The technical yep. stuff, obviously, you know, him doing really well in, in St. Louis. Um, but then coming out here, it's different. This is a horsepower war. So. All right, there it is, 77.33. You know, and, and that's so funny you bring that up, Jacob. You saw you talk about horsepower war. I remember um, Odie Bakshi's uh, back in the day, he had he had a sticker. He's like, 1,000 horsepower? What was this? He had a sticker, like, when the horsepower wars, when it really came on. Yeah, 1,000 horsepower, LOL. I love looking at his wife. And yeah, and now, what? how much horsepower you got? <laughs> it's quiet, says, it's top secret. Yeah, it's good. But that was that was the big thing. And that big jump, I mean, that was just as recent as, I think, five, six years ago. Yeah. And, and and that was that's when things really jumped up. And it, Forsberg was on your podcast, and he talked about he wants to detune the cars. Like, this this, this is it. Like, yeah. can, can, we hit, can we hit the ceiling? Because the cars are maxed out, you know? So, hey, you talked about Beecham earlier. Let's see. Beecham damn near killed him. We'll see. Next in tires, the Clonex BMW in that first outside zone. Now transition outside zone two. The fluidity, you talked about it, man. Look at that. Man, you're a Beecham fan right here in the building sitting next to me. Is that a turquoise beanie he's got inside the car? He's a fan of you as well. Look at Beecham, the placement of his vehicle. Dude, where's your crystal ball, Jacob? I am you just, called it, dude. I am, a, I am a fan of good driving, and when I see good driving, I'm, I'm going to pay attention, and that was it. It was. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of bad driving. Are you, what, are you, what are you trying to say? Bro? I mean, hey, there's people out there who just want to see people wreck. But yeah, that's gets to the first inside. Clip. He's not Great as job. much angle through yeah, outside zone much. one, but he, he gets on the throttle early. He could have been deeper in two, but this is this is the Beecham that we knew existed. Exist, yeah. yeah, he was there the whole time, hiding, waiting, and now he's been unleashed in outside zone three, just crushing it, full throttle. You're not seeing a lot of corrections. Look at this, like ominously coming from the background. The dark side. Here it is. Here it is. Outside zone two. I mean, you can see him on throttle through that, and then back on where he needs to be. Could have been a little bit earlier. You do see a big e brake grab there, but now this is it. This is this is what we wanted to see in a Trent Beecham, and uh, it was just time. It's just time. It, it needed to happen. Look at the angle. Big left foot break there. I know the judges are going to critique all of these. I like that. That that last outside zone was was really really well done. Yeah. I feel like Jane's Addiction's playing, like, coming down the mountain. And then also, you said, here he is. Have you seen the movie Hook, Rob Williams? Yeah, yeah, right? years Rufio. ago. Rufio, yeah. right when the kids pull back his face and they say, there you are, Peter. I feel like, there you are, Beecham. We need, a, we need like someone to make a Spotify playlist of all the songs that are referenced today. Oh, I, it's ridiculous. It's got to happen. It's, yeah, I don't know. Well, Jared D. Idioms. Uh, I saw that. They love me, apparently. <laughs> It's not Jacob Z. Idioms, it's Jared Z. Idioms. 81.66, he doesn't get that top spot, but X Factor 1.33, oh my gosh, look at that. Robbie liked it, but geez, the Canadian American judge, Ryan and Brian. Are you guys, are you want some more hater in? Or? <laughs> <laughs> look, he's not even acknowledging me. I know, it's all right. I know you can They're hear not me, even Brian. Around You're now. smirking, I get it. I see you, I see you. <laughs> and uh, what, Brian, what, in all seriousness, what would define the X Factor for you? How do you how do you get those X Factor points on this track, Brian? Heavy throttle into outside zone two. It's not a lot of e brake. Okay, I like that. Thank you for the clarification. Here we go, Brandon Sorensen, Soren Sorensen, that United States Air Force Pedal Commander BMW. Let's see if he delivers those X Factor points. Again, there's that kind of that drift, that sailing into that outside zone two. We want to keep it consistent. 
He's on it, man. That thing sounds like a fighter jet. Granosaurus in that last outside zone, feeling all of it. I like that line, that angle. I just want to stay in the drone. That that is just the truth, Sierra, man. That that like Shakira's hips don't lie. You're gonna see again that camera angle, dude, does not lie. Yeah, it's it shows just how grandiose this whole track is, how big these zones are, and you can see that nice feint initiation in getting well in basically at the two cone. Inside clip one looked great, inside or outside zone one looked really good, and you can see how much angle he's got coming into two, which does shallow him up a little bit. Use some left foot break to try and adjust it. He's right on the outside edge or inside edge of outside yep. zone two, and then three, he just sinks in. And like you said, that supercharger screaming away does. It sounds like a jet it starting did. to take off. I mean, for whatever it's great. Reason, I haven't heard that come from that vehicle this great season. Branding. Yeah. What if they did that on purpose? They know that we've got the, the I don't know what jet it is that's sitting out here, but I mean, I'll, I'll spend an What's hour up, just in there. It's the United States Air Force Thunderbird. This is the Thunderbird, okay. This is the Thunderbird, yes, sir. So no. Brandon Sorrent, I mean, that was, that was good placement. You could see just nerves of steel. I don't think Amanda's here, right? No, She's no. She's in Sardinia. She's racing Extreme E. Yeah, yeah. Is anybody so, piloting her car? Uh, yeah, who was piloting his car? car? Was it I, I can do, yeah, it was Evan Bogovic. Okay, yeah. so Bogovic is driving Amanda. So Amanda, good luck to you. She's racing Extreme E, the all-electric off-road series. Leah Blocks out there. Uh, the Blocks live here in Park City. I know uh, Micah and Kira, obviously KB Forever. Um, shout out to the Blockhouse Racing um, Camp. Um, again, KB, Ken Block, great friend of mine and of the world. 81.00, um, 81.00 for Brandon Sorensen. So um, look at that. There we go. And there it is. Brian elaborated on that. So he does give out those two points on uh, in the X Factor. Speaking of Dark Horse. Oh, dude, Vaughn yeah. Jr. Yeah, he, again, uh, nothing but great things, great praise. Um, from the Ford camp when I was with them over the last few days out there in Detroit. There we go. Look at, look at, yeah. look at that soap on a rope and winds it up. He was doing Vaughn's move too, Vaughn. You know, the, the kind of windmill pointing and steering. Here we go. Vaughn Kitt Jr., winner in Atlanta. And talk about Disruptor. He shook things up at round two in Atlanta 20 years later from 2004. This Monster Energy Nitto Tire Ford Mustang RTR Spec 5D. That second outside zone. Not as dialed as no. I thought, man. You can see, kind of fighting the car. Let's take a look at different angle. Look at locking up that front left corner. Okay. What I thought would just be a kind of knockdown, drag him out. He ended up fighting with the car, not so much the track. Yeah, he Let's went take a look. really wide there on initiation. And then you can see when he comes in inside clip one, he almost misses it. So, yeah, it was tough, and then almost drives through outside zone one, gets a decent transition into two, but too much angle. And, yeah, gets back on the power. You can see the brake lights on, left foot braking to hold the car in place. That is, an, that is a veteran move there. He knew what was about to happen, made the correction almost ahead of time, and then tons of left foot brake, but that throttle is consistent. Yep. He, he put his foot down, he held it there, and just went, eh, all right, along for the ride. You know, uh, congratulations to the RTR team. Like I said, three peat, three in a row. Vaughn winning round two, Chelsea Nova winning round three, and Adam Elsie winning round four. Um, got some message, messages. Halomnia is actually competing in uh, Poland at Drift Masters. Also, Adam LZ is competing at Drift Masters. So, yeah, I saw that. To the Drift Masters gang. I know they joined us at uh, previous rounds. And again, rising tide lifts all ships. Obviously, we think and we know that Portland Drift is a premier international drifting sanctioned body, but um, cheering on drivers competing across the globe. Yeah, I did a, an episode actually over at uh, Drift Masters this year. Oh, uh, you did? Yeah, yeah. I uh, chatted with some drivers that were that have done both, that have uh, done drifting in, in Europe and then drifting in Formula Drift. So, Juha Rittenen was on, uh, oh. Piotr Vincek, which was uh, great. Oh, man. Zikandi man. Oh, God. Hello. It was so great chatting there with There are judges Brian Eggert, Ryan Lontane, Robin Ishida. We are up here in the booth. Um, the judges looking to their left, utilizing all the camera angles, scrutinizing line angle style. Again, 1 to 90 points. Line angle style, X factor, the unknown. Brian talked about it. Heavy throttle outside zone two, going from two to three, good, consistent. Take a look at our champions. Will be a new one here in 2023. Frederick Osbo in the hunt. Um, James Dean, he's top 10, but with two rounds left, 100 points. But uh, again, two decades of Formula Drift, culminating the House of Drift, Irwindale, California, 77.33, so zero on the X factor, just to let that be noted. But like you said, a veteran move with that left foot, left foot break to keep it, uh, to keep it, yeah, pretty shocking there. Yeah, yeah. I was winner last year. Yeah. By the way, winner last year. I believe he swapped out a transmission already this weekend, which is not a great way to start things off, but it happens. So Ken's had a, had a rough mechanic. 
Saw, saw him uh, in Sydney, Australia as well, partied with him, and uh, always love seeing Ken Gushi. Would love to see him back on the box. Here we go. All right, that three's racing. Amati's Toyota GR86. Fluid, like right? I mean, a little disruption to see there. Is that, again, that, that left foot break? How do you see that front, front right coming to a halt in that second outside zone transition now? Big angle. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ah. It's hard to say what that was, if that was an engine or a gearbox that just let go. Because the engine was still running, mm. and we're not seeing oil down on the track. It didn't seem like a diff. I'm wondering if he dropped another transmission. Mm. I really hope not, but it's tough. I mean, the, the amount of stress that we put on these cars and drifting, uh, I think Chris Forsberg actually put it yeah. that, that, like, drifting, whatever it's rated for, drifting does 30% more. <laughs> like, that's right. it. it. These parts are not meant to take the shock load and the crazy RPM changes, so... It, it didn't look like a terrible run there at a can. There's a couple of spots you could have critiqued on, but I'm wondering if, if whatever the mechanical issue was that took him out. Sorry, I was just listening in to see if I could hear yeah. what was going on. Whatever that mechanical issue was might have been happening at the line. So real hard to say what ended up doing that for him. Just clarify, I got some fans saying it's an F-16. Oh, it's an F-16. Yep. Gotcha. Shout out to Noel. What's that turnstile, Noel? Out in uh, Arizona watching. Dude making some some beer back in the day and making some horsepower. Wait for a toe off. Thankfully, Ken was ably, or able to make it off the end of the track, uh, but he is still kind of in a hot zone, so we do need to get him out of the way there. Can we send some more cars through? Shut her down. Yep. G uh, posted this this photo up. We got a mini Eco Beast, young young drift fan. Him and his family they, they drove. What was it? To to Florida to see a Formula Drift round, and they got send it tattoos. Oh mom no way! And mom and dad. Oh, that's so cool. Right? RTR on there too. A little RTR, yeah. All right. Hey, if you haven't picked up your limited edition Formula Drift gear, available now at the Formula Drift merchandise booth. So go pick it up either here in the building or online. But uh, again, celebrating 20 years. Plenty of uh, cool things over there. Skateboard decks, hats, all that. So got some beanies. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Round seven of the Formula Drift. Pro Championship here from Utah Motorsports Campus, just outside of Salt Lake City. Link ECU. We know what it takes to win. Pushing boundaries, performing under pressure, and having the best people on your team. performance, reliability, and power to get to the podium. One bottle, so many great things. When your engine reaches 75,000 miles or more, like on this truck, years of carbon buildup leads to reduced fuel economy, increased wear, poor acceleration, and higher emissions. Max Restore is specifically designed for high mileage engines with quality PEA and proprietary detergents to remove those stubborn legacy deposits and it includes a friction modifier to reduce future wear in the upper cylinder of your vehicle's engine. Restore performance and protect your high mileage engine with Royal Purple Max Restore. Ford Star, Euro, import, American, with bold colors and custom fitments. Your wheels, your way. Visit fourstar.com. I watched my first race yesterday. You're on the team, kid. It's orientation day. Hey, new 
you got. Let's get you up to speed. Punch time! Your workspace is ready. Looks like you got a corner office. Be part of something greater. Toyota, let's go places. NGK and NTK is more than just high ignitability spark plugs and precision sensors. They're about growing the car community. This is why they're introducing Shop Squad, an automotive meeting place for shop owners, service writers, technicians, students, and industry professionals to come together and share knowledge and encourage self-growth. Enrolling is free and you have access to on-demand training, digital newsletters, product launch information, and more. Woo! You can see the wind is blowing and that's gonna be of assistance to clear out the smoke. Again, just uh, beautiful weather here. I mean, just an absolutely bluebird day, looking like Toy Story, look like Andy's bedroom in Toy Story, the wallpaper. Do you get that reference? Core memory unlocked right there. Core, yeah, I, yeah, I grew core, up on that. Yeah. Core, core memory. <laughs> Let's make more core memories. Utah Motorsports Campus playing host to round seven. This is the Type S Elevated Type S, the official lighting of Formula Drift. Speaking of elevated, we are at elevation and it is dropping horsepower. Yeah. So it makes things super interesting. But uh, here's our driver championship as it stands right now. Who wins it all? Gun to head. Oh, uh, Matt Field. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man, that dude's put up. He's he's come so close so many times, and I don't know. I just think he's he's at that point. I think. Chelsea, I mean, I, I, I can't. I can't. I know, I know. Chelsea, so obviously, is leading. He's got this advantage. He's got two wins. Odie is right there in the hunt. Simon I mean, Olsen's uh, there, too. Simon's like, in the mix. Man, it's oh, crazy. It, it's, it's so cool. Yeah. I love this Simon coming in his first year. Just, just Edwards all gives the her hands. All the confidence. Cutting it up, chopping it up. Alec Robbins, here we go. Let's see what Robbins has got for us. Alec Robbins coming down, shooting the gap into that inside clip. Ooh, he saw him. He saw a little bobble there. Coming to the inside clip now, it looks like, boom, set it, get it. In the second outside zone, judges. I'm going to have one of the judges jump on the headset to elaborate more on X Factor to get that more definitive. Ooh, that V8 just absolutely screaming past the judges. Non stop tuning, Kendra tires, Nissan 350Z. If we could uh, get one of the judges there, Ryan Lontane, if we could throw on a headset and just elaborate a little bit once he finishes his score, um, elaborate on the X factor and what, what we are looking for. Yes, yeah, so we take a look here at Alec Robbins run, big flick there, and we can see that he had to grab the e-brake again a second time, and it gets back on power and starts to slingshot that car down. And you can see here the side bite coming into play as he gets back on throttle through outside zone two. And we'll see what the transition looks like, which is really nice and smooth. Lots of angle, almost too much angle as he comes into three. And he's able to settle the car down, get things sorted, and come back through. I, I mentioned this before, but Alec Robbins, he, he is a driver that at any point in time can come in and just crush this out. Especially if he's upset. I don't know what it is. When that man gets angry, he drives like he drives like he's on a mission. I've never seen Alec angry. Oh, I have. Have you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was, uh, I want to say it was in Texas a couple years ago. He okay. got upset and put down just an incredible run. I remember him getting first in qualifying for round two. You're right, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's, uh, he, he's, he can shred out there. And, and, I mean, he's making every bit of use of those kind of tires and putting it down. So I'm excited to see what his score looks like there. That initiation was a little herky-jerky. Kind of initiated a bit early and then had to kind of reinitiate again to keep the slide going. So yep. needs to work on that a bit. Beautiful mountains. Like so yep. picturesque. Yeah, and you know, I, I haven't seen Larry yet. I assume he is here. I know, saw him in Sydney a couple weeks ago, Sydney Motorsports Park and the World Time Attack Challenge, but uh, had drifting out there as well. And uh, went to Japan after that, him and his team. So I assume he's here in the building. Busy boy. Busy boy. Taylor Hall. Taylor, Taylor Hall. Full pull Hall. Yeah. Hey, Ryan Montaigne on headset. Lontane, break down the X factor for us because I say X is unknown as like metaphorical, but there is specific here. 74.66 for Robbins, but uh, Ryan, to you. 
Yeah, we're really... Can you hear me, Jared? Yes, again. Yeah, all right. Um, we're really looking for fluidity uh, with the throttle application throughout the course. We don't want to see a lot of jerky movements in the car. No, um, a minimal use of handbrake. Uh, the the D-cell going into outside zone two should be pretty small and quick and then back on throttle at the beginning of the zone. And um, it's really the lack of correction, the lack of mistakes, and the high level of completion of all the zones and clips on the course. You know, we joke uh, earlier about, uh, it's sort of like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. You, you, you get one score for one trick. And if you do two in a row without a mistake, three in a row, four in a row, you get mm. multipliers. Like so that. as you complete the course at a high level, you get those multipliers and you'll get X Factor. Here we go, Taylor Hole, big angle there, takes out that outside zone, gets, oh, he's using all the course, but not in the front. Proper way. Oh, Taylor Hall goes off course. Comp cams, Kenda tires, Wild Willies got wild, uh, wild hole there. So uh, that will be an incomplete there for Taylor Hall. So we have a few incompletes, by the way. It does bear repeating. Mike Power, Diego Higa, Kenshiro Gushi, Taylor Hall. So in that instance, you need to put down a score. Otherwise, number one qualifier will get by runs or yeah. so on and so forth. Yeah, and you can. It almost looks like the car was lacking side body. He, he threw the transition yeah. in, the kept sliding, and then same thing here through two. He tried to, you know, keep the run going, and the car just was not biting in to give him that confidence to be able to keep throwing angle and throwing more at it. And when it slides out like that, there's there's really nothing you can do. He tries to get back on throttle to get the car to, to come around, and that's about it. So I yeah. think uh, back to the drawing board, check the setup, check the changes, and see what you need to do to dial in a bit more side bite and get that car back on track. You, the drivers, having some struggles here, and uh, Taylor Hull, one of them, unfortunately, just goes off course, and that'll be an incomplete for Taylor Hull and his Corvette. Yeah, it's tough. It's super tough. I can't, I can't even imagine the amount of pressure after having a situation like that. Go back to the pits, try and get this, uh, trying to get this figured out, and then yep. go, okay, cool, we still have to go back and do it again. Ryan Literal, our number one qualifier, 87.66. We have not seen a score in the 90s just yet, but Ryan did a, he, he spoke on behalf of all the judges. They're all on the same page. I liked, liked what Ryan said, a multiplier, kind of link it all together. That's just going to multiply, multiply times two. You know, you keep, like, like I, I completely understood the analogy. Um, yeah, so four incompletes already, Hull, Gucci, Higa, and Power. So those those drivers are obviously forced to uh, to go to the second round. Yeah, you gotta you, you gotta get back to the pits. You gotta give yourself a bit of a pep talk. You know, the whole team's gonna kind of chat with you. Some drivers like to have conversations, get their mind off of it. Some of them just like to be alone and just and just relax. Yeah. But uh, yeah, next up, you know what I'm excited for right here? What's up? The wing is back. The wang is back. The wing of the wang is back. Wing wang. Wing wang is back. Wing wang fang. I am a I am a I'm a huge the fan. Wang is giant. back in town. Yes, I'm I'm here for it. Okay. Yeah, I want to I want to see big wings on like every car. Is it okay? Oh, like, but you're saying the big wing wang gang. Yes, big wing wang gang. Does Forrest Wang like wings? <laughs> <laughs> All right, there, there it is. Now we're seeing it. Uh, the Force Wang, originally from Hawaii, now living in Arizona. Saw his wife earlier, um, and uh, we chatted up. And it's great to see uh, Forrest and his Get Nuts Laboratory team back in the mix. You know, I, I know you aesthetically like the wing. Sometimes um, it, it, it can play a major role with, with at high speeds. Uh, sometimes it actually can straighten the car out. So sometimes it, it, actually, it actually could hurt as opposed to uh, to helping. Yellow speed racing here. S chassis, you see him. Big chrome gang wheels uh, going in that second outside zone. Big, you can see again, that left foot brake there. Good angle in the second outside zone. Now transitioning into that final one. That, that looks really good. I mean, that is just as photogenic as it gets right there. Didn't get all the way deep in that last outside zone. Good angle, but definitely could have dug deeper in that second outside zone. Yeah, so Forrest on his return kind of talked about how he has to dial more grip in the car. He's known for a ton of angle and for like crazy style. And he's trying to be, you know, go back to more competitive. And it looks like here he's struggling a little bit with the grip, actually, where the car is starting to pull itself out of that zone. And uh, yeah, I think he just needs to work that out a little bit. And outside zone three, same thing. 
you can tell he wants to be as deep in that zone as possible, but the car is pulling him out of it. And that's not what we need to see. We want that, the rear tires, we want those Kendas right on the edge of the track the entire way through. But I, I do love the way that the 2J sounds in his car. It sounds incredible, the car looks incredible. He is an outstanding driver with some of the most style we see in FD. But he did talk about wanting to dial more grip into the car in order to be more competitive and, and align himself more with what the judges are looking for. And I think right here, it kind of bit him. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's that's kind of you know where where force is at. He always has big angle, um, adding more speed to, go, to the car, not you know not getting that side bite, but just getting uh, he's got he's got the angle, yeah. just that speed going through it, and uh, yeah, just finding that happy balance. It's tough. Everything's everything's a balance with this sport. The more horsepower you put in, okay, well now you're gonna wear tires faster, yep. so you're gonna change alignment, and then that means that now you're not gonna have as much grip or more grip, or you're gonna wear out a tire differently. Like yep. every single change these guys make affects something else in the car and you've got to adjust for that. Could not imagine having to work on these cars and balance them out. It's, I, I don't think that the, the crew chiefs and the mechanics really get enough praise for what they have to do just to get these cars to do this. 77.66 for Forrest Wang. Nick Novak has called his competition timeout. Another one. Yeah, so that's gonna hurt. So uh, his NGK competition timeout called by Nick Novak, working with Jerry Yang Racing. He's had some, uh, some great runs early this year, but a little bit of bad luck. We got Daniel Stuckey lining it up here, burning those uh, V-Tour tires off. V-Tours. I liked your podcast with him. Yeah. I, I, got really to, I got to know Daniel a little bit. You know, again, the, the podcast a little voyeuristic as far as um, not just focusing on drifting, you do a good job of kind of bouncing around and telling a story why drifting, why, you know, and, and Stuky, big snowboard guy, big snow guy, big BMX guy, and uh, I like how you cut into that. Yeah, I, tr I try to leave every podcast going like, oh, cool, like I learned this about it. I want, it. I want the listeners to be able to feel more attached to each of these yep. drivers. And that's just that insight. So here we go, Stuky here from Lakeville, Minnesota. Let's see where he... Lands, seen some of the drivers. Jeff Jones hanging out, watching, uh, watching drive. He's got an 80.66. Feeling confident that uh, that'll put him into uh, just outside of the not so great eight. Here we go. Daniel Stuckey initiating M spec performance. S chassis coming now past that inside clip into that first outside zone. Again, you can just hear and the smoke, right? That, that smoke signal, you can see it kind of dissipate. So there's that that coasting going to the second outside zone. Now into that third outside zone. There goes Stuky. And just dialing him right in for Stuky in that final outside zone. Yeah, not a bad run. There's a couple no. of big corrections that really, you know, you make the correction, you don't realize what the implication implication is going to be until later on. So that initiation, get a left foot break in order to bring the car back around, but does set him up quite well for outside zone one. And then outside zone two, he gets into it as early as I've seen almost anybody do it. And a lot of speed coming through outside zone two, but not a ton of angle. But this e-brake pull here coming into three, you can hear it. And that really changes how that flow of the corner is going to be and it causes the car to come out of that zone a little bit earlier than what it needs to. So he's using a good chunk of the track, nice initiation, throws a lot of speed in there. I think there's a big clutch kick in there as well. And uh, yeah, it, it's not bad, but with this track, anywhere you have these long zones, any correction you make is gonna change the line and the attitude of the vehicle. That's gonna change how much of the zone you can fill or if you're even gonna stay in the zone. You can really hear it. You can really hear that you Would you say get in the zone, auto zone? Get in the zone, auto zone, yeah. Get in the zone. Or the outer zone. Nope, nothing. All right, I tried. No. Um, yeah. Auto, auto zone is a presenting sponsor. Of yes. I, I'm trying to plug both people. Okay, well, I've plugged you in the enough, middle? dude. I, I know. What have you done it. for me? Uh, I almost had breakfast with you in Detroit. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, almost. I got, I got a beanie for you all. No, I'm good. It's trying right. to quit. Yeah. Here we go. So uh, waiting for the score to come in here for Stuky. We'll see if Novak is going to be pulling up. Can't end knockout qualifying. 79. 79 for Stuky. Travis Reader up next. The, so actually, speed, the speed reader, Travis Reader. Yeah. I was thinking the Grim Reaper. The Grim Reaper reader. He's not a Grim 
He's too nice. guy. He's yeah. too nice. Like it's like, sorry, man. I, I hate to do this. Have your uh, Family Guy. Yeah. Adam Carolla plays the voice of the Grim Reaper. Yeah. Family Guy. No, sorry. Man. Uh, hey, sorry. I, you know, I'm here again. <laughs> so I did a I did a ride along with him. Uh, this week, and we did an interview while he was driving. We're working through oh, fixing we're... all the audio, but okay. it was fun. Yeah, I asked him a couple of questions, and okay. it was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good interview. Yeah, you're. I know you called out uh, Trenton Beecham as your dark horse. Reader could, reader could show up too. I mean, remember, he got the win in New Jersey last year. He could put it all together in this Nicholas BMW. Travis Reader comes in. Let's see. Nice dial. Let's see if he accumulates some of those uh, X Factor points. Just Knocking him back. Here we go in the second outside zone. Good angle from him so far. Just real fluid exhaust though. And just right, right into that last outside zone. Get a little, get a little, uh, you know, kind of response from the judges over yeah. here saying, "Look at that! Look at that!" You know, so that's that's a sign of a that's a sign of a good score. It's a good sign, yeah. Big, yeah. big initiation as early as he can. Definitely gets into that first inside clip. Could have been deeper in outside zone one. Sets himself up pretty well for outside zone two though, and holds the car through it pretty much the whole time. Doing a great job there, Reader. And as he sets up for three, you can see he sets the car up early and then gets on the throttle and just holds it there. There's not a lot of steering correction. There's not a lot of extra inputs. Great job. One of the things I did now, and I want to blow up the spot here, is that the car was struggling with some overheating issues. And I've heard that throughout the pits all weekend. We are at altitude. It does change things. If the air is not as, as thick, less yeah. oxygen in it. I've even heard brakes overheating. Yeah. Kind of starving, so, right? Yeah. Starving of that. That, like I said, the thinner air at elevation. You can see, normally he's got his back, like those rear windows covered up, and he doesn't have that here. So he's trying to get as much air through. The hard part, though, is the dust. Yeah. You're going to open it up, and there's a lot of dust in the air here. And I mean, you're going to start plugging stuff up, making things dirty. So to get a car wash set up, get these guys cleaned out. I put that out in there just for you. <laughs> All right, so waiting. 4,400 feet is the uh, elevation that we're at. I sorry, I'm speaking meters. <laughs> okay, whatever. Again, I always say I don't know how poutine is Canadian. I mean, it's so American. It's French fries, cheese, and gravy. Right? It's true. 87.66. Travis Reader takes that number one spot. Well, and guess what? Ryan Little score 87.66. So the X Factor. Look at three, four, four. Judges liked it, and and I and that's why. I don't know if you caught it. I laid out because I wanted to listen to because you could see the vehicle and the attitude of the vehicle. He was th th he was fluid. I yeah. mean, he was like Bruce Lee, dude. He's flowing like water, man. That was really, really well done by Travis Reeder. Oh, no back. He out. Oh, no. So what that means is 32 drivers. Yep. So if you get a score, you're in. So pay attention. Pay attention. Power. Gucci hole. There it is. So again, Novak is out. He did call it competition timeout. Um, also, Diego, Diego Higa. Yeah, just they, going. They, they have incomplete. So as long as you get a score, you're gonna be in the show. So who's paying attention? Well, right now, Travis Reeder, because say they don't get an incomplete, you get a fast pass in the top 16. It's like the magic key. You go to Disneyland, you pay a little extra, boop, you skip the line. It's like TSA pre-check. Yes. Oh, man, the glory oh. of TSA pre-check. Oh, dude, do you, have so clear? do you have clear? Hey, no, no. I, I got clear. I, I got do. them all, dude. Yeah. I'm level. I got digital scan. With a oh, dude. Dude, I flew back from Australia. Yeah. Didn't need to scan my passport. Really? Just took a photo of me, and he goes, Jared, go ahead. Mm. Didn't even scan my passport. He just knew you. <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, <laughs> keep it moving. No, this guy. What's up, bro? He dabbed me up. Yeah, that's ah, cool. Nice. <laughs> That's 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 how lenient passport is. Like, <laughs> customs is. They're like, oh, so come on. Nice. All right, here we go. Our next driver, Dean Carnage Carney, another driver that was on the outer zone featuring Jacob and the signature Teal Beanie. Here we go, Dean Carnage Carney, Hyper NFT, coming into that second outside zone. I think this track will suit Dean's style. Here it comes in that last outside zone. Fills all of it. Yep. This is this is a Dean track, man. This is a really good Dean track. Just absolutely hammers it down, I would say. Throwing a brick on that go pedal. Just wants to mat it. That's it. At the end yep. of the day, all that Dean Carney wants to do is just destroy tires. And this is a great opportunity to do it. 
So as you see, that big initiation in, super early in on it as that car starts to come angled, gets that first touching the first outside zone as he goes to the second outside zone. He set it up super, super early and then holds it all the way through. Gets back on the power. You can see him almost adding more power as he goes into three, stays on it all the way through, and then just sets it and forgets it. That's yep. a ride. Yep. Great job. Yeah, really well done there. Like I said, this really suits his style. Dean Carnage Carney working her way through the drivers. Just a few more left. So, again, the format this year, the not so great eight. We'll take the bottom eight drivers. They will have to complete a second run. So, right now, four are guaranteed to be in that not so great eight. The Taylor Hole, Ken Gushi, Diego Higa, and Mike Power. As long as they get a score on their second run, because Nick Novak's out, it's now 32 vehicles. What's that? Oh, yeah, you can go to second run. Well, he's, I thought he said he's out. Uh, Got it. Okay. Let's get clarification here. Novak has it incomplete because he is four. He did call his comp timeout, didn't make the five-minute allotment, and now is going to a second run. So I apologize. I thought he was – I heard he's gone, he's out, yeah, so no. I thought we had a big mechanical, but yeah. he's got a chance. So you're telling me there's a chance. I, I, exactly. What about a girl like me and a guy like you? I got that reference. That was that. Oh, it's the same right. That's right, the same, same okay. quote you I, just okay. said, dude. Eighty-one point six six. Eighty-one point six six. That was literally the same quote Is that you just said. Before? Yes. <sighs> what about a, a a girl like me and a guy like you? Right. Literally, never. So you're saying there's a chance? chance. Yeah. Just remember the one time. Great movie. I mean, yeah. Another Canadian. Oh, Jim Carrey is Canadian. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, we've got a few of them. Yeah. Here we go, moving on to our next driver. This is Jonathan Castro from Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, the LTH Mobile One GR86. All right, fluid is Castro. We love to see Castro show up in a grand style in that second outside zone, filling all of it. Gets that last outside zone. Good consistency. I, again, kind of reminiscent of what we just saw there from Reader. Yeah, so, so fluidity. Watching him in practice, I've noticed that they've done some big, big setup changes in this. The car looked really grippy. It looked really tight at one point in time, and then it looked really floaty just before we came into qualifying. And this looks like somewhere in the middle, so they've kind of figured it out. They've, they've, looks like they've got it. Now, that being said, if they did change the setup just before qualifying, there's a couple of zones here that he could have filled a little bit better. We do know Castro is one of the best chase drivers on the grid. It looks like his lead run does need a little bit of help here. Does not fill all of outside zone two. He's right on the edge of it, but we want them, you know, almost into the into the gravel there. And as he transitions into three, you can see where that floatiness I'm talking about is coming into play. Was able to get the car set up, has to lay on some big left foot brake to hold it in there. Yeah. We're gonna have to wait to see what his score is. All right, we'll see. Dominican Republic, Dominican's finest. I've seen his hat. Love it. It's cool. Love this trailer. Him just in the race oh, suit, yeah. you know, lounging. Yeah, that's a great image of him in his race suit and a lounge chair on the beach. Yeah. Looks like a Corona ad. It's it very much <laughs> that that is him though. Yeah, he's you know? very chill. Very very happy-go-lucky dude. Always got a smile. Serious about racing. But I have seen you talk else. about Alec Robbins I, without me seeing him get upset. Uh, I have not. I very rarely have I seen. Uh, but I actually I have seen him a little heated. Yeah. Yeah. He'll, he'll get there. He'll come out. Aldo looking on, waiting for the score, judging, watching. Look at the baby. Look at the baby. Brows of concern. Radioing in, waiting waiting to tell him the score. I'm sure that's what he's Score's coming in. Here we go. John Castro, 76.66. 76.66 for John DeCastro. Puts him into 13th position. No scores in the 90s yet. Again, we are uh, still looking at Travis Reeder, the highest score, 87.66. You know, we've seen Ryan Turk get number one qualifier twice this year, but uh, could not convert 
And he got second. Yeah, so a lot of nine, 90s for uh, Ryan Turk, but converting that, we'll see if uh, this track suits him. Taking a look at, uh, you can see the telemetry system here, live data, 85, 84 miles per hour here, initiation. Mr. Cool, that's the name. That name again is Mr. Cool here. Jonathan Hurd, the ride of Paducah. Oh, you saw him shimmy his way in that second outside zone. He needs to kind of commit a little bit further. Failure to launch that second outside zone into the third. Oh, buddy! No. Holy cow. Again? That's at stage right, loses the wheel. That is the second time. That could have been way worse. Yeah, he is He is very lucky that that slowed down in time. Um, wow, so. We, uh, we saw a wheel come out, come off in uh, Seattle as well. Yeah, his right wheel got deleted, glitch in the system. Unfortunately, exit stage right for that uh, back right wheel. Looks like he's okay. That's obviously our, our main concern. Yeah, he hit 98 miles per hour on entry. Wow, he is boogieing. All right, let's take a look at it again here. So a uh, transition into that second outside zone. That's on the dark side, we're calling it. But look at this, 98 miles per hour on entry. Loudest on FD, but it's when he goes from uh, outside zone two into outside zone three. Where does it where does the where does it leave? Ready? It's still there. That back right throws some smoke and transition and going up. Oh boy! It's on transition. Just the G-force load tore off those studs. It looks like. Yeah. See here again. Show me in, show me in slow motion. There it is. Slow motion for me. Wow. Slow motion for me. He is going to need another brake rotor too. Guarantee there's a flat spot in that. Spider Ryan. Looking on, looking very concerned. Yeah, I'm, I'm really curious what ended up going. I mean, it may not have been a stud. Something else could have broken, and that's what caused the wheel to start to cut, tuck under, and then that is what yeah. does it. I mean, it, it happens so fast. Yeah, and it, it just, well, what's crazy is, you know, when he initiated, but we saw the brake rotor. The, yeah. I mean, the, the, so probably. It, the studs I mean, are broken. Yeah, the studs just sure. snapped off. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, about I also, uh, talking about, unfortunately, failure of vehicle, I got a text from Taylor Hull. He says he lost power steering. So that's why he got that incomplete. So here's another incomplete. So we got five, we got five now? Got five total. Pressure is Excuse building. Me, uh, six. So if you got a score up in the upper 70s, you're, you're going to get locked in. You're going to get locked in. So very unfortunate turn of events there for Taylor, or excuse me, not, Taylor Hole as well, but um, the pride of Paducah, Jonathan Hurst. So we'll see if he can get his car even back up and running. And he's got to work fast because, uh, I mean, we only have how many he's more drivers? Driver 12, so, yeah, we don't have a lot of time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. 10 or 11. Yeah, 11 drivers. Yeah. 11 drivers left. He's got, he's got a good crew. He's got a good team. I mean, they're going to they're gonna do everything they can to get that car back out. There is no – he is not the no. give-up guy. No. no. I mean, when, 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 it, when, you know, Long Beach – Broke his foot, right? And he yeah. still went back out there. Boink. Oh. Whoa. And there he is grinding on that back right rotor. So we'll see if, uh, if his brakes are okay. Yeah, that's that's definitely going to that's gonna mess up a rotor. Um, potentially a control arm. Potentially a strut. So. Yeah. All right. So unfortunately for Jonathan Hurst, he gets towed off. But uh, we'll see if he can get his car back together, up and running. You get a score. Um, I, I, no, I'm not. I, sorry. There are 33 drivers still in it because Nick Novak is still in it. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, more. Round 7, the Formula Pro Championship here at Utah Motorsports Campus.
some fun now, man. What up, everybody? I'm Matt Field. Right now, we're obviously in the middle of a prep day, so a million things going on, ton of crew running around underneath this giant tent sitting in front of the Drift Cave big rig, and then kind of gives me a second to reflect and think back, and it wasn't always like this, that's for sure. Not too long ago, I was racing out of an open trailer with a borrowed toolbox, with borrowed money, with borrowed parts, with borrowed time. Like, that that's how I started out, man. And I didn't own anything but a drift car. And just with perseverance and grinding, grinding, being that guy who's willing to stay late, being that guy who's willing to help the mechanics, being that guy who's willing to introduce himself and say, hi, my name is Matt, and this is my plan, and this is what I'm doing, and had no sponsors, no nothing, but you know, a couple people early on believed in me. Uh, I remember I was at SEMA my first year. I ran my first season, right? And then everyone told me, you have to go to SEMA. That's where you get all the sponsors. That's where you talk to people and everything. And I was like, I don't even have any money to buy a plane ticket to Vegas, but like, all right, we did it. I split a hotel room with like five dudes, right? Two beds, five dudes. And it was at Circus Circus because it was the cheapest piece of hotel that we could possibly get. And I walked my all the way to the convention center, walked around all day with my piece of proposal that was made on a Word document that I made and just talking to every single person that I possibly could, introducing myself and man, it's, it's been, a, been a hell of a journey. I think my message to anyone who's deciding that they want to go down this path is you just have to be the guy who's willing to grind and you got to be likable. Like you have to have people who are willing to help you just because they believe in you. And the only way that you're going to get them to believe in you is to be the person who's willing to put their line, be the person willing to stay until two o'clock in the morning and thrash on the car. You know, eventually you open your eyes 11 or 12 years later and who knows where you might be. Thank you guys very much. I'm Matt Field. Make sure to check me out on all the social media platforms and Throttle. FD Eclipse powered by Throttle, that's right. All right, we have 11 drivers left. We'll take the not so great eight, the bottom eight. Obviously those with incompletes, including Hurst, Novak, Pole, Gucci, Higa, and Power. And again, we're, there are two rounds left. Top five are in the hunt, 100 points up for grabs for first place. So mathematically, James Dean's still in the hunt of a championship, but yeah. I mean, that he would need he would need major mistakes by other drivers. But just uh, you can see Kazuya Taguchi sitting eleventh, Hurst, Castro, Adam LZ shaking things up. You know, Adam LZ won round four, and now uh, tosses the keys back over to the captain, Captain Clutch Kick, Von Gittin Jr. Yeah, that RTR split really messing up championship points. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm, I'm here for it. Anything, yep. that, anything that adds to the plot, yep. I'm, I'm signed up. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I said, it makes, makes my job easy as far as announcing and telling stories. Kazuya Taguchi, as uh, we just said, sitting up there top 15 from Hokkaido, Japan. Kazuya notably won last year in St. Louis. Here we go, Kazuya Taguchi taking a look at the telemetry. And it doesn't look like it's retreating. <laughs> Kazuya Taguchi initiates up garage ISR performance. 86 of the VR, the GTR engine under the hood in that second outside zone. Just listening to it. Like I was, I was here to just wind up. I was kind of I, I, I kind of mooted myself there just to uh, see and watch and spectate there. That was a really good, fluid, solid run there from Kazuya Taguchi. Especially that second outside zone. I mean, I was just kind of looking at it with my naked eye, not referencing the screen, and it just it just was right there. Look how much smoke we got. He's done such a phenomenal job of taking the Japanese style of drifting and adapting it to what we need to see in Formula Drift, the speed and the aggression of it. He's so fluid, and we see it. He's making corrections with left foot braking, but it's not affecting the line. We're not seeing the car wavering. 
He's making these corrections the correct way. He's not overdoing it where you see the car change angle abruptly. These are, that's how you make a correction. You, you don't just grab the handbrake and cause right. the car to swing around wildly or left foot brake and cause the car to slow down. These are little taps that yeah. hold the car where it needs to be. Oh, look at the angle on that. Love it. Love to see it. Right hand drive too. You can see his hands up yep. the wheel. All the inputs. Hey, we got the uh, the turn 14 uh, ride, or, ride or die. You could ride or die, meaning well, you could actually get ride along with Daijiro Yoshihara, turn 14, pit and panic. So I know he's out here giving some ride along, which is pretty sweet. So if you haven't seen that. Also, Brandon Wicknick, uh, former Drift friend of the family. He's, uh, he's He resides here in Utah. He's giving some uh, some rides, the D Spare S chassis. He's giving some ride along. So if you want to ride in a drift car, both uh, with Daijiro Yoshihara and Brandon Wicknick. Cannot recommend it enough. If you're a fan of drifting and you've never ridden in a drift car, yeah. it is wild. It is so. Who have you ridden with? Uh, so Travis Reeder, uh, Jeff Stoneback, I did it at Road Atlanta oh, cool. for, uh, for Good Life. And hey, real quick, 84. Yeah. 84 for Kazuya Taguchi. Puts him into third position. Oh, that's great. Yeah, great like, you're, yeah, you're absolutely right. I rode with Gucci at Irwindale. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big dude, so squeeze <laughs> me in there. You got to. You gotta, you gotta, Can't catch me. I'm like the greasy guy in Family yeah. Guy. Another Family Guy reference. <laughs> Greasy naked guy. Yeah. Yeah. Great visual. Thanks, mm -hmm. Jared. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Hey, um, you know, cut off jeans or jorts. What are you wearing? Uh, no, that's what I'm going with right now. Yeah, but they're these not are, jorts. Those aren't jeans. Uh, no, they, they technically are. They are Levi's. Uh, these are 502s. Um, <laughs> they, they, no, I love these. I love these. I think I, they're oh more my. like, uh, they're, they're shorts. They're like chino. Oh, because they're below shorts. the knee? Yeah, they're very. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a below the knee shorts guy. Yeah. I can't do the new trend of up high. I just okay. I don't have the knees for it. All right, cool. Yeah. Let me show me your knees. Here we go. Rome, Rome Sharp is here. He's running on six cylinders, man. He is down some HP, so he is fighting the right to party. Going to that second outside zone, you can see it, right? Just kind of down the HP. But Rome fighting for it. You can hear it. You can hear it. it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that, oh. it might be yeah, broken. Again, six cylinders out of eight. I feel like if there was a meme to define that, it's a Sylvester Stallone like uh, yeah. thumbs up. He's just like beating up. Like we got this, dude. Hold it might be broken, know, but it sounds drink, but it whatever. sounds good though. I kind of <laughs> like it. Good. It kind of like psycho. it. It just sounds different. So, no, it doesn't. <laughs> that does not sound good. Rome it is like a jet ski <laughs> <is> broken. <laughs> Rome is a master of overcoming crazy situations. Years ago in Pro 2, he smashed in Texas, and they zip tied the car back together. He has run on different Rome tires. Is still, you know, oh, the, still, he's right. His trailer almost, rolls. He almost died. I know. Like, I, I hate to just bring that up, but he almost died. He almost hit the truck. He's asleep. Almost got shanked by, by railing. Yeah. There's there is nothing. Rome will do like it, 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 that. He won't do. It wasn't do. built in a day. No, no, exactly. And Rome has been forged in fire for years, and just doesn't matter. I feel like it's that Jocko Willink where it's like, cars down on two cylinders, good. Like, cool. <laughs> We're gonna do it. We're gonna figure it out. And that's what he does. Yeah. It's. Yeah. I've never seen him with a frown. I've never seen him complain. He just goes. Yeah. Man, so yeah. many drivers would just be like, you know what? We're gonna save the engine. We'll get him in our window. Rome, now nah, we're already here. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So now I, I feel like he got a score. Now let the work begin, right? Like, are they gonna do an engine swap? The spotter's like, already what? gone. What's yeah. that? Spotter's gone. He's already out of the building. Yeah. He's grabbing the wrenches. He's going down there. No, he's There's an there. engine. He's Is he? There, uh -huh. so, yeah. There's an engine swap going on tonight. Someone yeah. get the yeah. Someone get the engine hoist out. They are towing him off. Yeah. So, just enough to get over the line. That's it. We got just enough left of this engine to get us across the line. <laughs> Pat wow. Gooden's ripping on you, Jay. Is he? Oh, come on, Pat. Pat Gooden says it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I had Pat Gooden on my old podcast years ago. Yeah. He probably doesn't even remember. Probably didn't even put two and two together. 75.66. So he does have a score, man. That's that's better than most. Better than most. Better than most. Yeah. Not as good as some, but better than most. Better than most. Tow it off, and I'm sure they're getting the tools ready. It's going to be a long night for his crew to get that swapped out. We'll see. I don't know. The spotter over here didn't. Uh, he was he was smiling, and that's that's the kind of attitude that uh, the RCP team has. Yeah. Just happy, happy that they got across the line, right? Sometimes that's all you can ask for, just to just to make it across the line. So. Taking a look at these past champions, our next driver here, Chris the Force Forsberg, qual uh, currently sitting ninth in points. Uh, Three-time champion. 
Chris Forsberg. The first three-time champion, I might add. Right. So, uh, and, and all, all three three-time champions here in the building, Forsberg, James Dean, and most recently, Frederick, the Norwegian Hammer, Osbo. If you haven't watched Controlled Chaos, please tune in. Uh, Rockstar Energy Drink highlighting Ryan Turk and Frederick Osbo. So, uh, airing, airing there on MAV TV, premiering on MAV TV tonight. So, tune in. Controlled Chaos on MAV TV featuring that of Ryan Turk and Frederick Osbo. Does this feel like your Thursday night viewing parties? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a viewing party. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't sure. I mean, I know what the house layout. I, I didn't know if you have like a home theater built into the that house yet. layout. The house layout. Oh, house. Sorry. Yeah, it's your house. I house. Need a, I need. I need to take the remote and do the drop down screen yeah, just, so I can understand what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, the, the subtitles. The closed caption. Let's take all the U's out of all the words. It's gonna be good. <laughs> all right, here we go. Chris the Force Forsberg from uh, Doylestown, Pennsylvania, now living in Southern California for numerous years. That Nos Energy Drink, all new Z VR powered. See, uh, see if he's got the power. The power of the babe. The power of the hoodoo? The voodoo? The voodoo, power of the voodoo. babe. The power of the babe. What's that from? I don't remember the movie. I remember the song. Uh, do you know who sings Remind that? me of a man. One man. The man with the power. That song? Uh, do you know, I'm, I'm do not you know saying No, I don't. David Bowie, dude, Labyrinth. Oh, this is from Labyrinth. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Chris Forsberg, The Force. Let's see what you got. Show me what you got. Here we go. No, Initiates, throws it in. Be Here we go to pass that inside flip into that first outside zone. Chris tries to help in the second outside zone. A little lift on that front end. And that exhaust note now coming into that last outside zone. Just slides right on in. Right, does, he does exit out of that last outside zone a little early. So, uh, again, Chris more of a you know technical precision driver, not full on out. So I'd like to uh, like to look at this one here again. Let's see what we got. Yeah, as he comes to that first inside clip, everything looks great, especially through the first inside zone. But he does float the car longer than what the judges wanted into two. They want him back on throttle well before that. A little bit of a left foot break there to correct the car coming around. Transitions really early, and then same thing floats the car into three back on throttle, and you see the corrections that he's making. So these are. When we talked about the, the corrections between him and Kazuya, you see the corrections happening, but the attitude of the car wasn't changing. With Chris, is, you can see what's happening in the car, and that's not what we want to see. Right. So, a little, little bit more work to do, kind of uncharacteristic of Chris. Normally, he's a very, very reliable and steady driver, and that's not what we saw here, but never know. Yep. Never know yeah, what can I, happen. I, I, again, Chris really shines in head to head. Yes. You know, it, uh, I, Fortunately and unfortunately, he kind of gets judged against himself because, of, I mean, look, he's a day one -er, right? So 20 years, you kind of have these three-time championship expectations of him, and uh, I think I think he's he's leaving some points out there on the table. He's also taken a lot of risks throughout his career for, like, engine packages. He's yeah. done things that not a lot of people have done. Great point. Uh, yeah, and, and that's yeah, part of it, too. Yeah, Nissan V8, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like Truck engines, racing yeah. engines, you know, And he always engines. stuck true to Nissan. Nissan on Nissan, right? Yeah. Never went to an LS. Never went, obviously, 2J or RB. He always, always Nissan, Nissan. Yeah, I mean, at any point in time through his career, he could have made the jump, but stuck with Nissan. Still a great score, 77.66. Puts him into 10th position. So still no 90s, man. It's so, coming. Uh, it's going to happen. I'm going to will it into existence. Okay. I mean, look at, look at what we got coming up. All right. In the hunt. For a win, Ryan Turk has qualified well, has not converted that to a win. Here goes Ryan Turk from Derry, New Hampshire. Son Roman and wife Shannon cheering him on from New Hampshire. The Rain-X Toyota GR Corolla, the Rockstar Pilot. He's on Nitto tires on the corners. Let's see how this hot hatchback throws in. And here we go. That four-cylinder turbo nitrous wound up nearly a thousand horsepower. Pass that inside flip. Now transitioning. Big squat. Oh, goes in. You can see. Oh, he oh man, he gets into the gravel. Steps it down. Just bit off more than he could chew. Gets into the gravel. And that's going to be an incomplete, I believe. Yeah, the judges aren't even looking. So that's that's an incomplete. So another incomplete. Wow. I'm really curious how much it comes into his head, the big hit that he had here last year. 
Oh, you know, that's we, right. We talk about, you know, the, the fight that happens between the years and, and the mental game that comes in with this. And, like, whether he, maybe he's thinking about it consciously or not, that's a big impact. Yeah. And, and maybe some of that comes through here. I didn't see, it didn't look like anything crazy mechanical happened. But as he comes through one and then transitions into two, you can see the car hit angle and it just it slides back out a little bit too much. So I, I'm not going to sit here and try and make any setup or chassis corrections or just notes on that because. Yeah, stay in your lane. Yeah, no, Steph Papadakis <laughs> is right there and I do not want to meet eye to eye. That man has so much knowledge and I'm sure he's dissecting what the car is doing and dude, already relax. knows. He's a happily married man, dude. He's right there. I get it. You're, yeah. you're courting him right now. I, I mean, I, I have a lot of respect for that man. <laughs> He's, he's an intimidating figure. Is he? Yes. Look at, look at that Stephen. When I when I see Stefan, I don't I don't I don't think of intimidating. <laughs> Get in here. You've been around. I'm, I, look, I'm the new guy here, I've, man. I've known Stefan for I know. 25 damn years. No, I'm I'm sure he knows. <laughs> he's like, he can't even hear us. <laughs> so uh, you know what? Maybe maybe with uh, you know qualifying high. That doesn't pay off. Maybe qualifying lower and having to go and force himself to work harder uh, to get into the show. Could be. Maybe that'll pay off. Could be. Yeah. Again, you can't win in qualifying. That's what I always say. You can't win in practice. You can't win at qualifying. You can't win at top 32. You can only win by taking those steps. Right. You gotta. You gotta crawl before you can walk, and you gotta walk before you can run. It will be interesting with all these incompletes. What the brackets can end up looking like. I am a big fan of, of staring at that bracket oh, yeah. having all these you know battles in my mind like oh what could happen here what could happen there and the crazy part is you you've no idea you've no idea anything can happen right and that's and you bring up a great point the level of where drifting is at it's anybody's game like no offense to, i'm not naming names yeah, yeah. but previous years it's like ah, that okay you, you can, could you could forge a 16 yes now it's like nope. no no you you really you really can't so yeah, so look at, look at those incompletes. Hurst, Novak, Hull, Gushi, Higa, Power, Ryan Turk. Um, the, big, the big thing here, the elephant in the room, is if you get two incompletes, you're out. You're not running into Saturday's main event because here we are on Thursday qualifying for both Prospect and Pro. Tomorrow, exclusively dedicated to Prospect. The final round, we will have a 2023 Link Engine Management Prospect champion tonight. Ben Hobson leads the pack, qualifying ninth. So, uh, but then... Again, the dual, the double incompletes, you can find yourself on the outside looking in or in the bleachers or packing it up. Don't want to be – says. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. all right, again, if you want to see more about uh, Ryan Turk and Frederick Osbo, Controlled Chaos airs tonight, uh, 10.30 Eastern time on MAV-TV. Highlighting. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, Team Rockstar. <laughs> seeing, uh, Too seeing much fun Ryan's. up here. What's that? It's a great time up here. Yeah, it's like a big family, Isn't it? man. Everybody's fucking uh, around. It's a uh, good time. I don't. Know. I mean, no, I, I don't. Fun, fun is. It's work. Fun is a uh, perspective. It's fun for me, but there's a lot of stress just mm -hmm. to the right of us. You know, as far as the spotters getting in the head of the drivers, giving them insight, what's going on. And uh, this guy, he's an absolute ripper. You know, in, in the mix, in the conversation in Seattle, it's the Kwame Washington's own Dylan the Dozer Hughes. Dylan Hughes changing up his livery. He's got the gray flavor going for us. As uh, again, promoting the Permatex Optimum RTV. Easy removal. Here we go. Let's go. Let's see what we got here from Dylan the Dozer Hughes. Pass that inside foot into the outside zone one. Those Forge Star wheels, you know, when it's white, they stand out, right? So it shows you either corrections or no corrections, right? So right now you can see minimal, uh, no corrections. This is that Exhausto. He's wound up. He's got that 2G. I know you like that Exhausto. Gets into the gravel. Tr does drop a tire. So, but, I mean, set it and forget it as far as, again, throttle response. That was nice. Yeah. Again, the Permatex uh, Optimum RTV. Livery. I do like me a six cylinder, whether it's intentional or not. And Dylan Hughes doing a great job with his here. This is a, this is a solid run. This is what we expected of Dylan. Um, great job through outside zone one, sets it up into outside zone two. You can see the attitude of the car, you can see the angle, and he's just holding it. Transitions nice and early before he gets to three, is able to get the car into position, gets back on throttle, and just sits there. Now he does dip some wheels into the gravel. He's flirting with disaster a little bit. 
but he's able to pull it off. So he does get to that first touch and go, and then the rest is just outside zones. And, and we see what he's able to do there. It was a long e-break pull that really shouldn't be there going into two, but outside of that, I mean, really, Dylan showed up to party, and that's what he's doing here. So you do see that bit of a dip there, but he's able to hold together. And that could, yeah. have, been, that could have been disaster, but Dylan Hughes does not care about disaster. He doesn't know. No, no, he's just, he's, he's here he's to the drive. dozer. He's the dozer. Yeah, he dozed right through that gravel. He does dozer stuff. He does dozer stuff. Good Pat Gooden does not remember being on your podcast, by the wow. way. Wow. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Pat Gooden. I'll Shots remember that. Fired. Passionate Pat. I told you you wouldn't remember. Passionate Pat. He is a. I'm going to send him the link. Shout out to Donna. Donna. Donna Gooden. Hope you're well. I haven't, haven't, haven't seen Donna in a while. All right, here we go. What do we got? Who is this? We got uh, James the Machine Dean. Okay, you know, I mean, some some claims are being made by our, our broadcast team, and they're saying that it, James is due. Yep. You think? I mean, it's it's been interesting. This is out of character for him. I mean, it's weird to think that six overall is out of character for James Dean. <laughs> like, like, really, most drivers would be hey, incredibly excited. 82 for Dylan Hughes, excuse me. Yeah, most drivers would be incredibly excited about six overall, but for James Dean, that's just not acceptable. He got on the box. He got he got his first podium in Seattle. Yeah. He was elated, you know, and Chelsea is so it was one one and three for RTR. And uh, I believe Ford is, is is knocking on the door of wrapping up the manufacturer's championship. So uh, again, to have that you need the, the manufacturer's motor to match the actual vehicle support on Ford, Nissan and Nissan. So the the hybrid cars say uh, Dylan Hughes. 2J in a BMW. Here we go, James the Machine Dean ripping into that auto zone. Mustang RTR Spec 5 FD. There it is, that second outside zone. He's been taking notes. You can hear, you can hear that exhaust note. We talked about that, just nice and fluid, consistent all the way through. Goes all that outside zone. Man, I'll tell you what, Mr. Curly, Mr. Curly in my head, he's saying, you know what, he's due. So uh, the Curly might be true. Yeah, that was surly curly. That was a great run. I mean, this initiation right here, watch this. As he slings it in, that car is 90 Woo! degrees to the track, holds it, holds it on power, Bang. still sideways, Bang. turn outside zone one, into outside zone two. Boom. Sets it, forgets it. Just just Sheesh. taking a break. Yeah. Right hand drive, Mustang, able to get through. Goosh. Could have got a little bit better in two, but I mean I'm just, you know, I'm picking here. And then three, that's uh -oh. it. Uh-oh. There is there is no way there's tires left after the lot. That truth serum right there. That that might be it. Again, our current. That's gotta be it, man. I'll tell you what. At 87 is our current highest score, 87.66. Travis Reader, number one right now. That is a very fluid run. James, I mean, he has so much seat time in so many diverse cars. He got third place in Seattle. It's like, a, it, you know, we talk about set it and forget it, kind of a, a cooking term there. And I know your wife, Jacob, she's a pastry chef. She cooks all this. This is a, the, the, it has risen. Yes. It has risen and now, Bing, bing, bing. He's been proofing all year. He's yep. now coming out of the oven, a fully cooked and ready to go RTR driver. This is this is it. This is what we're waiting for. This was the moment where we see the James Dean fully adapt to this. Here car. we go. What do we got? 91.66. There we go. There's our 90s. We're in 90. It. We are in it. You called it. You willed it, and then it came to fruition. 91.66. Again, my director in my ear, Kemp Curley. Man, you know what? You're wrong majority of the time, but you were right right now. The seal is broken on the 90s. Yeah, exactly. This is they, we're we're ready to go. Getting high on your own supply over yeah, here. I'm just I'm I'm having a great time. And next up, Simon Olson. So oh. this is he he is struggling Top a little five. bit in practice though. He what? Yeah, he even posted on Instagram that they are struggling a little bit in practice. They're going through a couple of different setup things. But that being said, setup master. Yep. Right. Like if if you're gonna if you're gonna want somebody to help you with setup, and Odie Bakshi is the guy that you get to just tap on the shoulder, and be like, hey Odie, what do you think? Right. I think they're going to make those corrections. A great good. wealth of knowledge. First year behind the wheel of this. Here he is in top top five current standings. That feels suspension. S chassis. Vortex supercharged LS. And this combination has been working out. Simon Olsen yanks on that handbrake. Gets in that inside flip and that outside zone. This is uh, looking good. Again, another yank of that handbrake. Left foot braking. A Norwegian drift champion, 
see that overhead shot and that outside zone. And, and this is what we anticipated. This is what we expected. These top five drivers or top ten drivers. And, and just as you said, I mean, that's a great line there from Simon Olsen. Let's take a different perspective on that outside zone, too. Want to see how he handled that. Again, you saw some handbrake, little left foot. Like to see him be consistent all the way through. Yeah, great initiation there. Kind of comes in, doesn't throw a huge flick, but sets the car up really well and super fluid between inner clip one and the outside zone one. Sets himself up great for two. Maybe floated in a little bit long, but I mean, we're, we're, we're grasping at straws here to try and find problems in this run. And then as he sets up for three, same thing, watch the car. We're not, we're not seeing changes of angle. He holds that same angle all the way through. There's no big corrections. There's no big mistakes. Simon Olsen came, he is fighting for a championship. At the end of the day, he is in the running and he is not going to just sit idly by. He might be a quiet guy in the pits. You put him in a car, he's a monster. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's, he's, he's very polite and tame yeah. and quiet. And then you see him in the car, he is yelling and screaming. They had to turn the mics down on him. That's oh, how really? He, oh, yeah, he gets loud. <laughs> wow, Simon Olsen. All throttle. Just all throttle. Well, that's that good energy, man, you, and that's that's where you you focus it, right? You, you, you kind of stay channeled, and then you unleash when the timing is right. It, it really, really did. Yeah, Simon has been really elevating his game. Just, it, it just like I said, this man with machine, not versus machine, and, and he has just been in great synchronicity. He, him, him and this car, it just seems to work out. He's Kind of had some struggles with that all-new Toyota Supra, um, running a 2J in that setup and just, it, you know, it never really kind of coalesced for him. So, uh, well, you can, you just, you show up and you drive and you know the car's going to go 90, 90, 90, a nine zero. With some X factor in there too. I mean, that's, yep. you know, just all Icing. that throttle, all that commitment. That's, that's what it's about. Like, that's what the judges were talking about. Four more, four more drivers on their first run. We'll take the bottom eight with a, quite a few incompletes. Again, drivers incomplete. So you see that Dean Olsen reader, our top three. Those drivers are watching emphatically because that could be to their advantage if they end up there. Because if there are a few drivers, say, you know, again, we're taking a look at James Dean, if uh, we don't get a score from some of these incompletes, two of them in particular, James Dean will get a fast pass into the top 16 from today going into Saturday. So he's going to be posting and chilling tomorrow. So uh, Matt Field. <laughs> Here we go, Matt Field, the beast from the bay, this Borla exhaust, heat wave, lean customs, Corvette, the triple seven into that first outside zone. Into the second outside zone, a little bit of lift there. So you can hear it, that Borla exhaust screaming. Nice whip, very impressive, oh no! That snap, that snap, that transition. Nothing well, is getting. That is so uncharacteristic of Matt. Why, why did, why did he do that? What I happened? Know. I have no idea, but this is, this is what we were talking about. Anything can happen. You're looking at a beautiful run here, and you get into the last zone and something happens. So, nails that first inside clip, first outside zone, at angle, does not make any corrections between that. He's in the outside zone too, super early. Right on the course edge. All the way in there, his front wheels are in the zone. Like, all of this, and then into this transition, just too much sauce. That's it, too much style. Wow. He was, he was, he was excited. He was ready to go. And now the question is, all right, do we have an incomplete here? Is that, is that, yeah, is that Is this unchaseable? Is it unchaseable? That's, and again, you, yeah, you bring up a great point. That's, just watch this transition. This flick is just too snappy. Boom, max angle, and nope. It bites and snaps back. Man, that hurts. It hurts to see. Yeah, you, you know. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. Yeah. So it's going to come down to the judges. I know they've checked on the replay a couple of times. They are probably is, is you know, pushing his brows together. He's they're, right. they're walking through and trying to understand how this fits. What does this mean? What does it all mean? Our judge, you know, and, and the biggest the biggest critic of of Matt Field is, is Matt Field. Yes. You know, and, and he, he's he's found this Quan, this perfect spot. You know, him and his wife and his crew, they they race hard, they party harder, but and and he's you know his his he, we were just talking about it kind of off camera. You said just he or no, I think he talked about it on camera. Just uh, basically how he's found his his way about managing his energy, 
uh, managing his his mental capacity, you know, getting get, hitting that sweet spot. Yeah, he doesn't. He's not caring anymore about you know people and what they think about right. him. He's just being him. Yep. He's authentically Matt Field, and that you know, take it or leave it, love it or hate it. That's who he is. Yep. He's not pretending to be anybody, and it's been, uh, yeah, it's been it's been great to see. Yeah, him. yeah. Spotter's right here. You can see uh, Chow right here. There's, he's Matt Spotter. You see the Borla shirt. Um, Amy Bakshi, Odie Bakshi's wife, Spotter. Alex Jager, he's a spot for uh, Chris Forsberg. He's a drive pro spec as well as spotting. So here we go, 71.66. So is scorable. 23rd. 23rd. So keep in mind the bottom eight. So uh, again, 32, talking minus six, 30 minus six. So that's, he's right there. He's, he's right on there. that bubble. And we right? still have some drivers to go. So. Things heating up for the championship. Frederick Osbo, three time, two in a row, 2021, 2022. Can it be your first ever four time Formula Jim champ? So much on the line. Right? So much on the line. And he's coming up after Odie Bakshis. Odie Bakshis to feel suspension. S15. We saw Simon Olsen go out there, top five. Again, Odie Bakshis currently sits in third. A little bit of lift there. So again, we talked about that, again, that fluidity coming up really hot, but hitting the right spot, putting the car in the right place. That second outside zone, going to the third and final. That supercharged LS winding out into the second and the third. Well, Jonathan Hurst might have the loudest pops and bangs. The overall just engine sound, Odie Bakshi's. This car is insanely loud. And th there's a benefit and a curse to that. The judges can hear every single throttle change you make. Yeah. The, I mean, I feel like people in the neighborhoods nearby can hear every single throttle change <laughs> he's making. The car is so loud. There was a couple of corrections in here. So really like the initiation here. Not anything too crazy, but sets himself up for one and two. We're not seeing any changes in the car as he comes through to now. You can hear him on throttle all the way through. Watch for that front wheel and a little bit of a lockup. There it is. Not too bad, though. The car doesn't change. But he almost, I wouldn't say re-initiates, but makes a large adjustment coming into three. Does a great job through the rest of three. That is the only mistake that I'm seeing in this run. But, like, now that we're into the 90s, you got to be, you, you can't have this. No. But it's still an incredible run. Yeah, those, I, I mean, Brian Sage, I'm over here wrapping, off, wrapping out with him. Um, where Matt stands, he could be going against the top driver earlier, which could pay off. Right. If, if, he, if he gets into, again, we're talking about the not so great eight, right? So, um, the Matt's, what, what, do the math there, uh, six, eight, so what's 30 minus six, that's 24? Yep. So he currently sits in 23rd. So if he gets, if he's, if you're 24, you're locked and loaded. Right. Right? But he's, I mean, he's real close to that bubble. But yeah, real close. But yeah, you, but he does have a score. You bring up a good point, though, that now that we are this close to the championship, these next set of top 32 brackets, if we see any of these top five, top six, even top 10 guys going ahead and battling each other in the top 32, yeah. that is going to change things drastically. The early departures. Yes. And we, and we saw that, you know, with, with Field earlier. 78.66. Yeah, a couple of those spots that we talked about. I mean, here's the thing. Odie's going to get into battle. We talk about great chasers. He was one of the all-time great chasers. It's, it's crazy what he's able to do. He just super glues himself to cars. And, and talk about early departure. Osbo, right. out early in the 16. Right. So he lost a lot of momentum in the in the Pacific Northwest. And now here he is coming in. He sits in second, uh, just 28 points behind Chelsea Denofa, who leads the pack. Again, he won the championship 2015, 21, and 22. He's fighting for what could potentially be the first ever four-time champion in this Rockstar Energy Drink Toyota GR Supra. He's on Neto tires, wrapped around those Ford Star wheels. Let's see what Freddie's got for us. Freddie, what you got cooking? Here comes the Norwegian Hammer, swinging in. Big, massive angle there into that inside clip. He does miss it, though. He does, so you saw him just skirt around the outside in this second outside zone, that big, long one. Again, throwing some more angle on it now, coming into this final outside zone. Kind of a straight line approach, didn't You know, maybe he saw Matt Field kind of throw it in there. So just a smoother, more poetic entry and transition in that last outside zone. So not to, not, you know, I don't, that's not going to take James to score no. out. 
No, it's That's still not going to take the number one spot, but he's still up in the conversation. For sure. We used to call him the robot, and I'm not seeing that here. He used Good to point. be perfect, right? It used to be yeah. every run was, it was almost like, okay, cool, this is just going to lay it down. Yeah. But we're seeing him get more aggressive. That initiation is a stylish initiation. It's yeah. a big risk throwing it in that hard. And unfortunately, it kind of disrupts the line throughout the rest of the run. And I feel like he's almost chasing to get things back in there. So, real interesting. He did also just come off a big tour in Norway. Oh, that's he did a right. bunch of driving out there. I don't know when he got yeah, back in the wide. country. They're, like These are all factors we need to think about is the travel schedule, the work schedule. Has he had enough sleep? What is he eating today? These are all things that... Those are all factors. Have, You're absolutely yeah, right. You can change it. Yeah. But it's still, it's still a great run. But when we look at somebody like a Frederick Osbo, we are expecting perfection every single time he gets behind the wheel. And anything less seems strange. So, yeah, Frederick Osbo, you know, got a couple of things that he needs to work on here. It's still going to be a good run, but we'll uh, see what the judges think. Let's see what we got here. Ready, waiting for the score. Only one more driver left for their first run, and that is our current points leader. Chelsea Denofa, what's that? So a great looking car too. Yeah. I've always really enjoyed deliveries that, uh, that Rockstar. Rockstar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, great look on the gold nose again, just uh, kind of 79.33. So top 12. Yeah, one X factor. Normally we would see a little bit more out of that. Yeah, this is this and, is getting and, interesting. Yeah, and what's interesting here is I believe that pushes field down into 24th? Could be. Or is it even uh, now 25th with uh, Bakshi's score? So. And the man that can change all of it at the line now. Yeah. This. Yeah, so Chelsea Nofa leads the pack. No time champion, going for his first championship, leads the points. Here we go, that Pennzoil, Mustang RTR Spec 5. D. Like I said, I think this track really suits Chelsea's style. He's a, he's a, again, unapologetic throttle down. And look at that, you see just the car squat with those turbo fans, the disc, and there it is. I mean, look, who's number one qualifier? James Dean, Ford Mustang. Who's leading the championship? Chelsea Denofa. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that could be, that's challenging of that number one spot. There was no lift between two and three. Told you, dude. He just, Told you. It just, just suits his style. Dude, his throttle mapping is just a flat line. So a, a, an actual tame initiation for Chelsea Zanofa. Oh. But look how it sets him up through inside clip one to outside zone one. It's perfect. Oh. As he goes into two, tons of angle. He does make a bit of a yeah. correction that pulls him out a little bit. I think he kind of realized, ah, it's a little too much sauce in here. But he's all throttled. That smoke does not stop between two and three. Gets in there, using that left foot brake to modulate, hold all of yep. that horsepower back. But Chelsea Denofa, man. And here's the interesting part, too. Because this point race is so tight, yep. these extra three, two, one points yep. makes a huge difference. That's a great point. Yeah, like it, that, it, it I can mean, only come down. 28 points separate, and you know, 100 points for the win. So. Mathematically, and you'll know, go go to Ryan Turk, 99 points behind right. the lead. He's currently sitting at eight. 200 points available for the next two rounds, including this one, and then obviously Irwindale. So, we'll take a look at the United States Air Force instant replay, analyzing Chelsea Nova's run. Like you said, that second zone, he could have could have stayed in it deeper, longer. You know, I would say he was in it, but could have been deeper. Consistently started out deep, and then kind of shallowed up a little bit. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, there's some crazy runs on the board right now. Yep. Like, I mean, this is a really, really good run, but seeing that little bit of a bobble. 91.66, just the, the, all those little, yeah, all the tweaks. That's it. And then the X Factor, that's the, the next point to put in, right? Like, he, he drives with X Factor. That yep. is just his style, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, that's a good point. I, I remember back the first St. Louis, that backy he threw, it, threw mm -hmm. into entry, and, like, everyone's saying, like, what do, what do we do with this? <laughs> right? Like, how do we, you know, how do we judge this? And Here we go. Kane and Naka qualifying 89.66. So, so close. Just a bit outside. So it uh, looks like he does pick up a point, right? So here's James, number one qualifier. Now James looks on, Chelsea looks on, and uh, Travis Reeder. Yeah. You know, Travis with that 87. Uh, Simon Olsen with that 90. So uh, yeah, so you got James, Simon Olsen, and then uh, Chelsea Nova. Crazy. So congratulations. Uh, you get three, two, one points, like you said. They're uh, nose to nose. You can see uh, James Dean, Vaughn Gittin Jr. So there it is. Dean Olsen, Denofa, 
The top 24 are locked and loaded. The bottom driver, they got Ryan Literal, top five. Congratulations to him. So who's on the bubble? And who is gonna have to take their second run? So there you go. So again, you can see you can see those in the red. Jager, Field, Turk, Hurst, Novak, Hull. And notably the incomplete drivers, mm -hmm. they need a score. Otherwise, they're watching from the grandstands or they're packing their stuff up. Wow. This is crazy. And this has so many so again, implications. Yeah, sorry, real quick. Jager, Field, Turk, Hurst, Novak, Hull. There we go. Gucci, Higa, and Power. So again, the drivers with incompletes, they need to get a score. Otherwise, you know who's watching? Like I said, James, number one qualifier. If uh, if you don't get a score, two drivers don't get a score, well, you're gonna get that uh, gonna get that buy run. And yeah. that is hypercritical. Just extra points. You're just getting free points at that yeah. point. Yeah. There you go. It's like free real estate. <laughs> I buy ugly homes. <laughs> it's real estate. All right. Well, guess what? When we come back, we'll re-rack them, track them, stack them, back them. So don't go anywhere. Round seven. This is the Type S Elevated. We deem it because high elevation, 4,400 square, 4,400 feet in the sky and elevation. So uh, when we come back, presented by AutoZone. Don't go anywhere. Again, the second run for the, uh, the bottom ones. Send it. We'll be right back. I'm Dylan Hughes. I'm Travis Reeder. I'm Ken Gushin. I'm Matt Field. I drive Lincoln. They are the most reliable EC around, and they always deliver. Their global tech support gives me the advice I need every time I need it. Their products are super easy to install and easy to set up for the performance that I want. They stand behind their products and support their customers. They're always innovating and delivering great new products and performance features. I drive. I drive. I drive. I drive. I drive Link. This is the road to the championship. I've won the championship twice now. I think we can do it again. Let's go, let's do this. Everybody's really pushing the envelope. One mistake, and that's it. Oh, my goodness. What did I do wrong? I don't get it. So it's all about attrition here in St. Louis. Oh! Oh! We're in the playoffs, man. We are fighting for a tooth and nail. And oh, Osmo goes hard! Matt Field, the guy to beat. 
that we got 20 seconds to shine. We can't make any mistakes. If you do, you're, you're out. It's going to be coming down to Irwindale, kids. Is Matt feeling the pressure? Absolutely. The championship is on the line. Ryan Turk, he says, hold that rock star, homeboy. Let me show you something. Matt Field is out. Huge repercussions here. Your winner, Frederick the Norwegian Hammer Osbo! What an amazing ending to a 2022 season. Welcome back to Utah Motorsports Campus. At one time, the longest racetrack in the United States. Yep. We are just talking about it. Road America was the longest. Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. One of our judges, Brian Eggert, was just there. And then uh, then this track. And now um, Spring Mountain. Spring Mountain and Rump, Nevada is the longest course in America. All right. Well, we only used a couple turns for us. But uh, <laughs> you can see right here, again, notably, we're going to fill the, uh, the spots here. So we have... Uh, Some good battles in here. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, a, we're, we're still working it out. We still got people to qualify, but this gives you kind of an idea of what we might be in for coming up. Yeah. And there are some interesting battles here. So uh, a couple of a couple of notes here. Uh, Ola Jaeger, just, you know, these, these are drivers with score, so it could be a potential one. Matt Field, similar. I mean, we still have to have them run here. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ola Jaeger, Matt Field, they're, they're the only ones with a score. Right. So, again, we take 25 and below to fill the other spot. So we do have 33 drivers. One of these drivers will be watching from, uh, from the sidelines, maybe two, just maybe three, maybe, shoot, five. I mean, we have a, a few incompletes. So, uh, again, we are... Here we are taking a look. Here is who is rerunning for their second run. Like I said, 33 drivers in total. But uh, Jager and Field already have a score. Those are pretty decent scores given, uh, you know, what we just saw uh, for the for the first run. But uh, Turk, Hurst, Novak, Hull, Gushi, Higa, Power. It is a must must score run. Otherwise. They're not even part of the conversation. Yeah, just get it on the board. I mean, we've got some due to mechanical, some due to strange mistakes, some due to strange mechanical. Right. So and it, it, yeah, and it, and if you really kind of want to solidify it, mid you know mid seventies, uh, I think you're going to be in the show. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that's the the bar that we've got right now. Yeah. So a lot of these guys just just get around the track, keep you know keep the back wheels in the zones, don't do anything crazy, just just get a score on the board. Ola Jaeger. Jumping into the Pedal Commander Burnout Box. Here for Cannon Knockout Qualifying. It's kind of like a, I never call it a LCQ, but this is last chance qualifier. Yeah, right. best of the rest. I mean, there's a couple of different ways we could frame this. The best of the rest? Yeah. <laughs> you see who's the best of the, you know. Again, because, yeah, it's not yeah. so great eight. It's not so great nine right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't roll off the tongue as well. No, yeah. We'll work on it. Not so great 11 teen. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Ola. And the Japan Auto Mark IV Supra from Norway. He does have a score of 74. Let's see what we got here from Jager. Ooh la. Ooh la la a wee wee. And here we go, leaving that start line. Here goes Ula in the Kenta tires. Look at that, man, the attitude of that vehicle, right? I mean, just, that thing's hitting switches side to side into the second outside zone. Still does, does have a score, but wants to really solidify it. Looks like he's fighting the car a little bit, not not as dialed as that first run. That, look, that looks great. That looks very confident. Last out, and just let's say that, yeah. right? And outside first up, well. he, he slides out of that last outside zone. I mean, I feel like Ula is still trying to figure this car out. He's been in a Mark IV Super for a while. This is the kind of second iteration. First one was Chucky, which is the kind of famous car that Frederick Osbo used when he first came over. Uh, this is the second iteration of that. So initiation was a little bit strange there, very straight. He kind of double initiated, threw one into the other one. It was okay, but then we see here how he's struggling to get the car into angle, hold it in angle. You, struggling, I think, is the, is the correct Yeah. One. So, could be a setup thing, could be some nerves thing, but either way, he's got to clean this up. Um, but at least he's got to score on the board. All right, here we go, Jager. Looking at it again, the, dry, the judge is analyzing it. 
Yeah, I think the initiation is going to be the big sticking point there. Did he initiate in time? Was he at angle at time? Because you can grab the e-brake at the three cone, but if you're not actually getting the car to rotate around, it's not really an initiation. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. I know the judges are, are able to flip through and take a look at a couple of different angles and understand when everything happened. But at the end of the day, he does have one score on the board. We are looking for a second one, though. Yep. Like I said, to really lock it in, really seal in the flavor, you kind of want to get that mid 70s or higher. And that's just going to be boom. Don't don't leave it in the judges' hands. Don't no. leave don't leave it don't leave it doubt. No, never leave it in the judges' hands. Wait on a judge's decision. Mike Power looks like he's coming into the box. There we go. Yep. Went that way. Here we go, Mike Power. And they're at 74.66. So, again, the best that uh, Ola can finish is 25th. Right. Right? So, qualifying 25th. So, 25th and below. And with those nine drivers, one driver will be watching from the sidelines. Here's Mike Power talking about that Type S product. This charger just launched by Type S. Type S is here in the building. Be sure to go by. Got yeah, some got a skills challenges. Set up, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a good time over there. Okay, let's see what Mike Powers got on the start line. And here we go. Through the chicane. We saw uh, Jager again. This is a must score. Otherwise, he will not be watching or he not not be competing in Saturday's main event. We're going to the second outside zone. A lot of left foot break. Comes up a bit short there. Seems like the car really gripping up. He's fighting it into that last outside zone. Filling all of that. Definitely, definitely got it dialed there. I want to take a look, uh, get that overhead of that second outside zone and see where he landed on that. It was hard to tell if he if he left that second outside zone or if he stayed in it. Yeah, it was a little worrisome there between two and three. It almost looked like he was going to over-rotate, but good initiation on the power early from inside clip one to inside zone one. As we come into two, this is where you can see him coming out of outside zone two. And he is He's well out of it. He does sink in right at the last minute. But that transition, a little bit more rotation, and he'd be packing it in the trailer, but he does keep on it. It's actually a really, really nice, stylish outside zone three as he holds a lot of angle, not a lot of steering input or corrections. I like that initiation on the rumble strips. Kind of helps him push the car out. Obviously, he's not getting as much traction when you're initiating on the rumble strips, although that's not what the judges are looking for. And takes that S15, gets it around the track. Most of what's left of that S15. He's, he's missing some bites. Looks like a shark attack. <laughs> you know, missing, missing that front left. The back bumper's waving around. Shark week wasn't too long, though. Was it? I missed it. <laughs> shark week. Shark, shark week. bite. Ooh, ha, ha. Shark bite. Ooh, ha, ha. <laughs> right? I know, sure. I know what you're talking. I used yeah, to watch yeah, I that with my my oldest son. Uh, he loved Nemo. Uh, we're into Shark bait. Hoo ha ha. We're into Bluey now. Oh, you boy. missed that whole era. It's nah, great. Good. Bluey's great. I'm good. I heard Bluey is pretty dope. Bluey's really good. So. Yeah. I feel heard as a parent. <laughs> okay, that's what I heard. that's what I've heard. No pun intended. Here we go. <laughs> 78. There we go. Mike Powers sealing in. I said power. I said Mike Power is sealing the flavor. All right, so 78 there for Mr. Power. Let's see who we got next coming down the chute. So you can see here how big this track is. Yeah. Like, you, you, it's, it's so big. It's crazy. It is very, very lengthy. Here we go. Diego Higa from Brazil. JDM Supreme. Collab ride this vehicle. Piloted by uh, Ryan Turk previously. JDM Supreme has an extensive car collection. Have you seen right? that? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. incredible. Yeah, I love, love what he's doing for the sport. Love yeah. that he's like collecting these heritage cards of drifting. It's weird to think that we're now, there's heritage collector right. cars, right? Drift cars, yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. Diego Higa initiates. See if he can get the, hits those rumble strips. You saw the car get a little bit disrupted. Doesn't, doesn't bother him too much, which is good. Higa now is at second outside zone. Needs some more angle, like you said, just kind of driving into it. Now he throws some more angle at it. Not that it, he didn't have any, it was just not as aggressive as I'm sure the judges would like. Left foot break in that last outside zone. All right, so it looks like Diego will get a score. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna do, brother? 
Yeah, a couple of a couple of things. The initiation, it almost looked like he didn't have enough speed or he initiated a bit too early for the amount of speed that he had and really had to drag that out. D did get it on the rumble strips, which kind of gets it a little bit further, but you can see here, he has to kind of get a left foot break and then back on throttle, so then overshoots him for outside zone one. Outside zone two, he's not too bad. It's a bit shallow, but able to dial the angle back into the rest of the zone. And he's got a good amount of angle as he transitions into three. But same thing, you can watch how long he drags that left foot brake. You can actually see him using steering inputs while left foot braking. So talking about corrections on corrections is not what we want to see. But at the end of the day, these guys are trying to get a score on the board. There is going to be one driver that is going home upset today. But Diego Higa doing everything he can to make sure that is not him. It's not a it's not a terrible run, but it does have those major corrections that we do see. So he's able to fill most of the zones, not all of them, but yeah. yeah, we'll see. He is an incredible driver, though. I mean, for adapting as quickly as he did to Formula Drift and yep. the level that this is at, it's it is very impressive. Such a different sport over here. And you talked about it earlier. Was basically you know here's Diego Higo lives in Brazil commuting to and from, where is he at? Did he get some rest? Did he sleep? How long has he been here? Yep. Is he, you know, was he rolling in, putting on a suit, jumping in the car? Or, you know, that that's a major factor. You talked about it with Freddy, how uh, he's been going over to Norway quite a bit. So, let's it see. It happens. There are definitely drivers that literally show up, put their suit on, and get on track. 80. So there it is. There Diego Higa. I guess so, I was being too harsh. What's up? I said, I guess I was being too harsh. Yeah, dude. Chill out. <sighs> I guess. Relax. You're an angry elf. You know what to say to that. Yeah. <laughs> but just because I'm another, not six another movie quote. Angry elf. Oh, you, come on, dude. Are you serious? Apparently. <laughs> Look at Edgar. Edgar's mad, dude. <laughs> say I elf did. one more time. Really? Oh, right, right. What uh, movie? Hitch. No. No. I'm literally saying the movie in the oh, thing. Elf. Oh, an elf. Elf okay. movie. Holy cow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right, here we go. Moving on to our Get next roasted. driver. Ken Shiro Gushi. Come on, Goosh. The Goosh is loose. All right, here we go. At, uh, again, that body. Toyota GR86. That VR6. That VR6, the V6. V6. Excuse me. Thank you. Get into the gravel. Throw some up here in that second outside zone. Now transitions. Third outside zone. There we go. Thousand in. He shut it down earlier there, but now. Seems to find the secret formula. There we go. Gucci's got a score. Should be on the board, but is it good enough? Remember, I, I am curious what that what that breakdown, what that mechanical was, but he's obviously gotten through it now, and we're seeing the Ken Gucci of old start to appear as he does a great job through inside clip one and inside or outside zone one, dipping a tire into the gravel, just playing with playing with craziness as we start to see him transition into three. Sets it in, left foot brake to correct the car, get the back end to come around a little bit more as he gets back on the power. It was a good run. It's a great run there from Ken Gucci. So that, I do like that initiation. I like that, that kind of snappiness. We see a lot of guys that faint out, but Ken kind of driving in and just whipping the car back around. So I'm not sure if that was like a big clutch kick or what it was, but it was cool to see. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Gucci uh, saw him in Australia as well. He was out there for... Uh, Drift competition within the uh, World Time Attack Challenge. Shout out to Ian Baker. Love those guys. BT, Brennan Thomas. I saw Matt Mike when I was out there. Levi Clark. Levi on the mend. He had brain cancer. And uh, so Ow. shout out to Levi Clark. A lot of, lot of great drivers. Gaz Wider. Just a bunch of, bunch of great cats. It's such a good time down in Australia. Speaking of Mad Mike, seeing him drifting with Max Verstappen. Uh, man, cool. if I was an FDE driver, I, the last thing I would want is Max Verstappen really getting into it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, 79.3. There we go. Kenshiro Gushi, the OG Gushi. Up in the mix. 79.33. So five more drivers left, I believe. Uh, yeah, we're getting or even, down. Or four. Getting down only a handful left. Just a handful. Just a handful. Right here. Right here. Yeah. Scotch. Just a scotch. Here we go. Yep. So seeing uh, five, four, four. Yeah, Matt Field. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is, you know, Field, Turk, Goose. I mean, th these these are contenders, right? And uh, and here they are. They're here in the uh, in the bottom, the the Q2, the LCQ, last chance, qualifier position. Wild. Just wild. 
So Taylor Hall, uh, we did get word that he was fighting with power steering. Yeah, thank you. Last one, uh, having some issues with it. Um, spotter and wife, Tamara Hall, coming mm -hmm. over, giving us the, the rundown, letting us know. All right. Taylor's biggest fan. Of course. Yeah. Missing a bit of the... Yeah, so, all like right, so let's see uh, how this comp cams. Kenda Tires, Wild Willies, Corvette. See if he got that power steering back. I know he's uh, been having some gremlins. Looks like, boom, good angle there. Seems a lot more poised. He's got some Edelbrock power. Bring him into that second outside zone. Now into the third. Okay, looking a lot more comfortable here, Jake. Man, riding right on that course. And, oh, 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 See it? Oh, there we go. So he fights it. Again, that angle, you couldn't see it. Looked like he almost got into the dirt, into the gravel, but uh, fights back. That that could have been a weekend ender right there. Yes. I mean, it, a little bit more into the gravel. If it would have caught, would have caught some side bite, that would have been a problem. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's great to see that Taylor is able to get everything collected back together and is able to do it. I, I like that way he loads the car up yep. before initiation and slings it around through inside clip one, out to in, or outside zone one, and then transitions into outside zone two. Holds onto the car, not a ton of corrections. He is using left foot brake there a fair bit to hold the car back. It is noticeable. You do see the smoke coming off the front tire. Backs the car into the last outside zone and just holds it. But right there, you see that wavering as he just tries to keep the car in drift, keeping that score on the board. But yeah, that, that could have been disastrous really, really quick. Definitely a bit of a nail biter. That, that could have been a weekend ender right there. But. Uh, Taylor Hall, keep him cool, calm, and collected, and able to finish the run out. Easily the most American livery we got out there. <laughs> <laughs> you can see into the car. I love seeing that where, where you see what the driver's doing, yep. the, the hand, like the, what the hands are That's doing. That's really telling of of their comfortability yeah. with the car, with the with the vehicle. Yeah, and, and also how how sketchy it is sometimes. You know, I call it a when you hit a beehive. You know, when their hands are all over the place, uh, like it ran into a beehive. Bees, bees, everywhere. bees. I got that one. Yep, Tommy there boy. Go. There you go. Your right. head's a thin candy shell. <laughs> Richard, I had no Richard. idea. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much here or here, yeah. like right yeah. here. Tommy want wingy. Tommy want wingy. <sighs> that that might have been the movie I watched the most. As a okay. Kid. Yeah. 76, Taylor Hall. So uh, he will be in the show. Plot thickens, kids. Plot thickens. We got some incompletes. Speaking of incomplete, Nick Novak. Ooh. This is it. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, used his comp timeout, couldn't make the five minutes, and here we go with the Novak racing. Jerry Yang assisted vehicle. So, again, Jager, Hull, Power, Gucci, Higa, they're in the show. Yep. Who's sweating? Matt Field. Yep. So, Ooh. again. Um, yep. Out of, out of these bottom four drivers, one's going to be watching from the sidelines. And uh, here we go. Nick Novak initiates. Don't know what issues he had with this vehicle earlier. Seems like he's got it worked out now. And that, ooh, you saw him kind of come unbound in that second outside zone. Riding into the third. Car a lot more settled there. Like I said, he was sweating. Matt Field. Matt yeah. Field's currently sitting fourth in points, 54 points behind our leader. Wow. Actually, excuse me, 40 points. I apologize. 40 points behind our leader, Chelsea Renofa. Look at it again. Yeah, Nick Novak. It, it, the initiation was a little bit interesting, just how kind of how late and when he got onto angle. And then same thing going into here into two. He had a lot of angle going in, which he kind of cut the line a little bit in order to extend out the rest of the zone as he transitions into three. He does a much better job of setting the car up, but we do see some corrections. We see some inputs. Is it going to be enough? We are now at a point where we've only got a couple of drivers left in our last chance qualifier, but normally we would say, okay, you know, if you complete a run, you're going to be able to do it, but there is 33 drivers still in contention, which means that you don't just have to get a run on the board. You actually have to put in a good run in order to do it. So one guy is going to be going home early. They're going to be packing it into the trailer a little bit early, and they're going to be spectating the rest of the weekend, which nobody came here to spectate. No. Not, not, these drivers did not come here no. to watch. Heck no. No. And even if you're not in the hunt for the championship, you want to win. Yeah, and of that, course. And that's what we said. Every, every dog has their day, man. Yeah. All right, Novak. Again, needs to be better than a 71.66 in order to lock it in. 
Mid 70s, you're in it. Mid 70s, you are in it. He's got it, Jared. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. He's, he's, he's right there on the cusp. 77.33. There, there we go. Nick Novak. So here it goes again. A lot of eyeballs on Matt Field right now. Like I said, talking about not only this round, but also the championship. 40 points behind our leader. He will be the, the last driver to run. But uh, again, just uh, just three more drivers left. Jonathan Hurst. So we got uh, we got some good information from his spotter Ryan about yeah. what happened. So studs snapped, oh, yeah. similar to what happened in Seattle. These yeah. were that going was to back be left. Yeah, they, they were going to be replaced. They were sitting ready to go, and they just didn't arrive in time to be replaced at the track. So they were old studs. They've got new ones ready yeah. to go, obviously. But all right, here we go. Coming down. Here we go, Jonathan Hurst. That. Uh, Mr. Cool BMW talking about it. Hopefully uh, he's strapped in and ready to go. Looks like, like you said, the stud's back out there. Stud on the wheel, stud behind the wheel. Yeah. Uh, dead. All right, so the Mr. Cool BMW, the pride of Paducah. Can't even see the back half of the car. Looks like he is way more confident now. So the high tour. Tires giving him the grip. Whoa. Gets into that gravel. Whoa, buddy. Fires off, brings it across the line. So this was a conversation we had in ProSpec about maintaining control across the line. We actually had a driver zero out because of that. Now, the difference is that he did make it across the line. He was able to continue. So how does that play in? But dips the front wheel into inside clip one, inside of outside zone one. He does a good job, sets himself up well for outside zone two. Maybe a little bit shallow, but he is all throttle, all commitment. He is all crazy, and that is Jonathan Hurst. As he comes through outside zone three, not a ton of angle. He's driving, and that lack of angle is what pushes him wide. So it's going to come down to, is this chaseable? What, what happens here in that last outside zone? Because the rest of the run was pretty good. Um, it's just going to come down to that finish line, and is that chaseable? Was that maintaining control across the line? Big elephant in the room right now. Ryan Turk, Matt Field. Ryan Turk, I mean, he's 99 points behind our leader. Right. Um, keep in mind, we're going to have James Dean up here. He's our KN number one qualifier. I'm going to have some words with him. So if you're a big uh, machine fan, James Machine Dean, that is, uh, stick around. Don't go anywhere after these uh, final two runs. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. He's it's right like there. When you say Candyman three times, uh, you know, obviously, said, yeah, right. He, when you say the machine three times, the machine, the machine, machine. Well, there he is, he, and he, he's not—he's not discreet. No, for being a big man, he's very six, quiet. Six seven—is that what it is? Six seven? Do you know, like in? Yeah. yeah what's that? Six, what's seven, that in yeah. meters? Here we go. So Chelsea, two Delbra. meters. <laughs> How many stone is that? I don't know what that. <laughs> I'm, jo I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I don't know the stone thing. The only man with two wins this season leads the pack, Chelsea Denofa. And that's four for Team RTR, man. So stacking him up. The only one not getting him is uh, is James Dean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is right doing. There. I'll tell you what. Again, <laughs> my director Kemp had his money on you, so he, uh, he you you owe him a beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Adam LZ shook things up. He's over in Poland. He's uh, competing at Drift Masters this weekend. Uh, good luck to him. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Travis Reeder, Stuky. This this is the overall driver standing. So. Uh, as a score is coming in. See here for Jonathan Hurst, 78. Hey, 78, that's good. Yep. That's good, so again, sweat in his Momo boots is Matt Field. <laughs> no do pressure, you, Chow. Do you, do you think, I, I'd be very curious if they're communicating this to him, if they're letting him know what's going on. Is he watching his phone? Does he know where he's at right now and what he needs to do? I don't know. I, I, I'm super curious <laughs> Are you telling he him where he's at? We got, we got Matt's spot, or does he know? What's going on? He's informed. Does he know what he's going on, or just do a good run? He's, right. he's doing a run. Yeah, I was saying just keep it cool, man. Yeah. Keep it cool. You got this. <clears throat> Speaking of keeping it cool, again, a number one qualifier. kind of So, so from a, a hero to a zero, literally, Ryan yeah. Turk, that Rain-X, Toyota GR Corolla. You know, those GR Corollas, three-cylinder turbo, those things are absolutely awesome off the showroom floor. And uh, now four-cylinder, his setup is the four-cylinder turbo nitrous. Right. And uh, look at that, field of Turk. Right. Never would have thought that. So right now, if Turk gets another incomplete, he is out, field will be in. The only driver remaining after Ryan Turk, Matt Field, who sits fourth in points. It came down to Irwindale. And again, with that rainy conditions, the wacky, wild, and wet, Irwindale, 
Matt Field took himself out, and Frederick Osborne was your champion. So Ryan Turk currently sits in sits eighth in points. This rock star driver, Ryan Turk, Rain-X Toyota Corolla. No sign of rain right now, so no Rain-X needed. Throws it in, very aggressive in this hot hatchback. Pass it inside clip into that first outside zone. Again, Ryan, Ryan Turk needs a score. He's sitting on an incomplete. And he needs a 70, let's call it a 72, and he'll be locked in. But well, this is definitely going to be better than a 72, but he can't. Ah, he comes out of there a little bit. But but here it is. So again, puts it together, gets focused, keeps his eye on the prize. That's uh, that's definitely going to be mid-70s. Yeah, yeah. Ryan's dealt with a lot of pressure throughout his career. Like, I, for some reason, I always feel like he's, you know, just this really young gun guy. That maybe it's just the energy he gives off, but... He is not. He is a veteran. He has been around this. He has been through stressful situations. He has dealt with crazy, crazy times. But Ryan holding it all together. Did throw a little bit too much angle at the beginning right. of outside zone two. But same thing, veteran move. Figures it out, knows what's going on, makes the, makes the appropriate correction. Comes through three, looks great. I'm sure inside that car, there's a big exhale. There's a, okay can breathe again. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, do think, I do think this is going to be above that mid-70s. Yep. Which is going to start pushing some other guys down a little bit lower. Some yeah. Uli Yeager, Nick Novak. They're going to—they're the ones that are going to start getting worried. But there is still one man that could be worried. Matt Field. Oh. All right. So again, uh, let's see. So again, Matt Field sits on that 71. So. Ooh. Ula Jaeger has a, uh, he has a 70. Ula Jaeger is sitting 31st in the 74. So if you really want to make sure to go, uh, go 75 or higher, that will solidify Ryan Turk. So Ryan Turk flirting with disaster. 79. 79. Boom. Gets it done. So right now, all eyes are currently on Matt Field, that Borla exhaust Corvette. Yeah, Borla every, Exhaust Corvette from the Bay Area has a 71, currently sitting in 33rd in points. Insert suspenseful music. This right, is, looks like uh, Biddy's Ryan Spotter. Looks like he's chilling. He's uh, he's laid back now. A little pressure. Can exhale there, but uh, again, there we go. So right now, Ola Jaeger. He's, chill, he's he's not chilling right now. He is watching Matt Field. Is he going to be in top 32? One driver watching from the sidelines. Will it be Matt Field? 71.66. He needs a 74.67 or better in order to get into Saturday's event. Currently sits fourth in points. The 777 Borla Exhaust GT Radial Heat Wave Visuals. Lean Customs on the roof. Four star on the corners, wrapped with, again, those GT radials. Here we go, slides into that inside clip. Again, 74.67 or better. We'll get him in the show. See the Momo gloves working on that wheel. Into that second outside zone. This is where it went wrong for him, transitioning from second to third outside zone. In fact, that point no return. And look at that, you see the Lean Custom logo on the roof. And the heat wave is on, and it looks like I think I think it's gonna solidify. Wow. That that was that was talk about not cracking under pressure. Matt did exactly what he needed to do. That's gonna be unfortunate for Ula. That's gonna be better than 74.66. Your thoughts? Yeah, I I was so tense throughout this entire run because he was not running it like a guy that just needed a 75. He was running this like he is still going for number one qualifier. Right. That is what I love about Matt Field. It doesn't matter what he's doing, he's going all in. And and that's the trouble. You know, when he transitioned into three, it was looking like a repeat of what was about to yeah. ha what happened previously. And I got I got real tense about it, but he did figure it out. He is a pro. He, I mean, he's come so close to that championship. We talked about it. I'm sure they're all tired of us talking about it. But this is this is it. This is yeah. what I feel. He, he could be put it together. Oh, yeah. I can I can breathe now. Yeah. I don't know. Oh man, I I feel for these guys. I well, you you said imagine. it. You were you were. Like, you know, I put gun to head. I said, who's going to take it? But overall, you said Field. He loves but, the but, pressure. But when, I'm sorry. Like I said, he's his own biggest critic, yeah. man. He is. Uh, he's really hard on himself. But again, he, he knows how to tie one on. He has a, he has a good time. Uh, but 
you know, he, he is definitely hypercritical of, of himself. So uh, let's make it official. Let's get the score here. Don't go anywhere because we will have we will have James Dean here. Cannon knockout qualify 92.3. So he qualified 25th. Wow. <laughs> Great score, and, the, and you said it. He was driving. Look, look at the like, X that, like, yeah. the, where, where was that earlier, man? So, wow. again, that would have been number one qualifier, but it said, it said number one, but that was out of the bottom eight. Right. So, uh, again, hey, Jacob, thank you so much. Dude, loved it. Exit stage left. I'm, I'm going to wrap here. out with James Dean, our, num our k and number one qualifier as the bracket is shaping up. And here is how the bracket is shaping up unofficially. Oh, could have waited a moment. <laughs> it's a, it, in the direct sun, it gets a little hot. James Dean joining me up here, talking about number one qualifier. That sun is violent, man. <laughs> Pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, yeah. <laughs> I got this Irish boy up here. Uh, he, he's, he's, he's a little pale. Don't keep the, me here too long. <laughs> yeah, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be like a walking blister. That, that sun <laughs> is bright. Um, hey, dude, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are you much. loving this track? It's sick. This track. You is, like it? Oh yeah. It it demands everything as a driver. It demands everything from your car. Um, it's really grippy surface with that much high speed to stay right on the edge. You need full commitment. Uh, you need the car to be 100%. Yeah. And uh, it all worked out for us today. And and it seemed you know you were talking. We've talked about you know your let's call it growing pains learning this car. Vaughn Von says just you got to hammer it down. So it's a perfect fit. And you look at you and Chelsea. Vaughn actually had the most trouble, right, out, out here. You saw him kind of left foot break to keep it out there. But it seems to suit your style. Your first time here, I mean, obviously you weren't here last year. That was the first time here. Take a look at the run, man. What's going through your mind? Yeah, so I was like, you know, let's throw it in hard. Let's go hard because if you don't go hard, you're going home. The entry worked out really nice. I was happy with where we ended up in the inner clip. But this part of the track was my biggest struggle. You're just absolutely full tilt to try to make it out to the outside outer two. Um, but the final outer three was was pretty nice, and we finished strong and uh, yeah. felt good. Yeah, and obviously you're loving this track, as we said. It, it seems full full on. You're you're doing a great job, and I, you know, as they say, the British term, you know, taking the piss. Um, I'm taking <laughs> the piss of of you're the only RTR driver that doesn't out of the four that doesn't have the victory. Maybe it could, might come together for Hopefully you. You're going to be, day, you're gonna be going against Taylor Hall. It's, yeah, it it's a good start for sure. Like, you know, we're, we're getting a bit closer and a bit more comfortable every single event. Um, obviously, we don't have a crazy amount of seat time in these FD events. And uh, we're just, we just keep on learning. The team are great to work with. Uh, the AutoZone RTR is getting better and better every run. Yeah. And uh, I'm just feeling more at home with everything. So. That's a great start to the Yeah, weekend. well, you are our K&N number one qualifier. You're three points richer. You know, uh, taking a look at the standings overall. Where, where are you currently standing? Six. Oh, yeah, six, six overall. So 61 points uh, yeah. behind our leader, 100 points for the victory. Love to see you win here. And I, I know you and your fa you, you know, your your mom and your dad and your sister, they're cheering you on back at home. I always yeah. get DMs from your sister saying, the, it's, we're up late, we're watching. Yeah, the family group chat on my phone is going mad after my <laughs> run. So it's, it's brilliant to have the support of everyone, um, all family, friends, and fans back in Europe and Ireland. I love your energy. Love you're so honest. You're so transparent. You're buzzing after Seattle. You got your first podium. You'd love to make it even better, second, or obviously an overall win, man. Let's keep on pushing. Yeah. We'll try our best. I like so it. It's well, going to be tough, but let's we'll, go we'll have some do adult, our best. Let's go have some adult beverages. You can do that. <laughs> <laughs> if I get on the podium, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do it. All right, all right, all right. Is Becky Thank here? You, nope. Queen B Drift is not Masters. here. She's what? Drift ma doing your oh, job. Oh, she's at Drift Masters. Masters. That's yeah. right. She's doing my job at Drift Masters. <laughs> yeah, Drift Masters pulling going. On. But guess what? Tune in tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's all pro spec, round of 32, live, 11 o'clock, Mountain Standard Time. Again, Saturday is all about all about pro, so round seven of the Formula Pro Championship. But tomorrow, we will crown a 2023 Link Engine Management Prospect Champion. Again, James Dean, your number one qualifier. Gets to chill all day tomorrow, man. You're gonna yeah. hit the pool? Just gonna relax. We got some stuff to do with AutoZone and a bit okay. of media stuff, and cool. uh, watch the Prospect and cheer them on. Awesome, man. Congratulations, James Dean. Your K&N you. number one qualifier again. Tomorrow, all prospects Saturday. Who's gonna win here in Salt Lake City? Send it.